listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. We're going to slide down them big hills. You know what I mean? On the big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay. We are back here at the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. Now, to start things off, first things first, Stony Buds, how are you doing today? So good, my dog. Woo. Woo. It's pretty good. Short and sweet. I like <laughs> it. To my left, we have Mons Roislin in the booth. Mons, how are you doing? We're doing great. Well, we are happy that you're here, Mons. Uh, for the listeners that don't know who you are, I'm going to tell them some stuff about you. Mons is a professional snowboarder from Norway, one of those freakazoids. He's a contest destroyer that has been on a tear. He's an Olympic silver medalist, six-time X Games medalist. He's podied at ju- podiumed at just about every major event in slopestyle and big air. And he's also low-key a bank slalom and slalom destroyer. He <laughs> likes to party. And he's, uh, he's sponsored by Porsche. And uh, <laughs> let's get into it. So uh, first things first, my first question. Your name is Mons Roisland, and the R-O-I-S, the, the O has a diagonal like hack through it. Yep. What what do we, what the hell does that mean? What is that? It's a Norwegian letter a letter uh, called U. Uh. Oh, it's U. Uh. Yeah. But uh. can you pronounce that? How do that I button? find that on the keyboard too? Like, so you how got, do I they do got that? have a Norwegian keyboard on. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's only Norwegian There's letter. There's not a hack it's, on it's the Mac. It's kind of weird, that? but it's a hassle to travel with, to be honest, because every time I like enter my travel details, it gets all messed up, and uh, they never find me on the system and stuff. But because mm-hmm. of the uh. They don't, have, uh, they don't have the uh. Yeah. yeah, it's a big uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, th- one thing we mentioned that I think is interesting, um, we're going to start it off. You're sponsored by Porsche, dude. <coughs> what's going on with riding for Porsche? Um, what's going on? No, I don't know. Uh, they're, they're awesome, dude. They're really, really sick. They're uh, um, a Porsche center in Oskar and Badum, which is uh, my home, home spot. And uh, they're just hooking it up fat. They're really, really sick people, and they want to do some do some stuff uh, and some projects, and they're just, yeah, hooking me up with some sick cars. So you, you get a free name, I would have went rolls Royceland. rolls yeah. Royceland. You, know I mean? mm-hmm. <laughs> you went Porsche, that's cool. So you get a free Porsche? Yeah, it's like a lease. Uh, I like get it for, this, for the year, and then uh, right now they're actually doing like some ice driving, which they wanted me to do, but I'm... I'm here with you guys, you know, just fucking sick. Priorities. Your priorities. Yeah, are tell set, the Porsche you know? you'll get a new one. Uh, what? You'll get you get lease, so you'll get another one after a year. Oh, uh, hopefully, if they're if they're as happy long as with you the deal. You didn't know? show up for the ice. No, no, no. It's, it's all good. They're, they're they're really cool people, and yeah. and they're just yeah random random situ- situation, but um, they're yeah really cool and wants to make it happen, and mm-hmm. I think it's pretty dope. Yeah, if they're interested in uh, hooking up the bomb hole, we'd love to work with them as well. We would gladly take a couple Porsches. We so. got really good uh, reach into Skin to Bottom, or whatever you call that, <laughs> that town. Is that what it called? <laughs> yeah. What was Flashing it? Bargain. Flashing. <laughs> yeah, I'll skin and bite him. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, we got good reach there. A lot yeah. of listeners. I've heard. Like, a lot of people talking about you guys over there. A lot of people talking about us out in the streets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get us a Porsche. We'll wrap it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Bomb hole Porsche. Yeah, yeah bomb That'd hole be great, Porsche. We're actually. all about it. Throw the, we love you, Porsche. You got, the, you got the rocket box on it, too? The rocket like box. Like the, the roof box for the boards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oof. That's a good look. What color are you rocking? It's a blue blue uh, nice. electric Porsche Taycan. It's really, really dope. Well, you yeah. plug it in. Charge plug it in, it. charge it up, and uh, wow. run it out. Yeah. Just nailing. Wow. All right, let's get into it. You know, obviously you're known for riding slope style and big air and all that stuff, but a lot of people don't know that you are a low-key slalom and bank slalom killer. We saw you at uh, Peace Park. Really standout performance. <laughs> Bash. It was a standard issue slalom. No, no banks. Yeah, standard issue slalom, and this guy was just bashing gates. Yeah. So you en- you ended up winning Oof. that. Yeah, we took the short short route down the down that hill, went as tight as possible, and ended up smashing some gates for sure. And that- uh, yeah, I had to go had to go fast. There's a lot of good guys out there. Was it your Viking background that had you like? Look like a weapon out there, just <laughs> toothpicks flying around. Those were the gates. They looked like they were just little. They would those like gates, move out of your way. Basically, those gates hurt. Like those were stiff gates. They didn't have the, like the the moving. Oh, the bender. Flex the bender. No, they were like stiff gates. That so it kind of sucked a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, but the but bender it, can pop down and pop back up and take you out. Yeah, but they're then they're soft. Kind of these True. guys are like hard, like hard sticks. But you mm-hmm. had like welts on your arms, huh? Dude, crazy bumps after actually. The guy. They started calling nice. you crazy bumps out there. Yeah, <laughs> that was the name after that event for sure. <laughs> and then you did well in Rick's Granson, right? 
Uh, yeah, I was in Rick's uh, some years ago, like maybe four or five years ago. Uh, it was really sick and uh, got second behind Turier. And uh, it was crazy. It was a really cool event. Didn't know how serious it was. And uh, yeah, Terry was up there like putting shit on his board and like making it fast. I was like, oh, damn, we're going after it today. And uh, but yeah, he beat me. So that was got to got to rebate that one time. Because I bet when he came on the scene, he had to actually run gate. So he probably is very experienced Oh, back in the day, you know, when he first came out. Yeah, he might have, huh? I like to think of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Recently at X, too, you got another podium. For a Banks Hall. Yeah, the, uh, it was just Gates, actually, there, too. It was, like, a special a special Olympics event, and it was really cool. It's a super good event, and I was partnered up with Dana Schultz. He's a, she's a real G. She's super fast. <laughs> yeah, big air, air horn for Dana, uh, and uh, got paired up with her last year. We won gold, went back-to-back this year, which is awesome, and, uh, yeah, we were running through some gates for sure. And he was racing uh, a guy that was an ex-slalom racer, right? Yeah, he uh, he's a really fast dude. It was fun. But you beat him. I did, barely. Like, barely beat him. It was close. It was really funny. That's all it takes. Like, he was, like, psyching me out up top, too. He was like, yeah, hey, Mons, you know, I'm 50, right? And then we were like, you ready to drop? The and, dude's like, 50? In. The dude's 50, and he's fast. He's been racing really cool. a long time. Oh, yeah. You know, you got the Olympic medals. You got the X Games medal- medals. You need a Baker Bank. You need some duct tape. That we would really tie it all mm-hmm. together. Yeah. For sure, that's uh, something we need to do, and uh, it'd be super fun to do more banks. I think they're really sick, for sure. It seems like you got a, you're good at a proficiency with the banks and the gates. Huh? Where does the skill set come from? Yeah. that's what I was getting at. Yeah, it's a it's a dark past. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a dark past from uh, actually being a ski racer back oh. in when I was a kid. Yeah, that's that's really dark. Yeah, right. No, it was it was it's probably good dark. for me to it be just honest. Got real dark. It was probably good for me to be honest. Like. When I was a kid, just uh, growing up there and like realizing uh, that wasn't my scene entirely, and like being that, um, it was very strict and very restricted as well. Like you, you do it this certain way, and that's all you do. And uh, you're there like so many serious, like crazy serious parents and stuff. From when you're ten years old, people are going off and being like insane with it. So it's it wasn't really that fun for me. And I started snowboarding when I was eight years old, and and like doing skiing and snowboarding for like four years on top of each other and it was just so much more fun snowboarding i always enjoyed it more and like felt it year after year just growing like that's what i want to do i don't want to be doing this like it wasn't that fun and then um i just brought my always brought my snowboard when i went on skiing trips and stuff and ended up just snowboarding way more and falling in love with that and then i got uh i sent out this sponsor me tape when i was 12 years old to DC and and Oakley and I remember like they both were like yeah we're down to hook you up with some gear and I was just blown away went out there and I told my parents right away I'm quitting skiing and uh so I quit skiing uh joined my last I had like went to my last like national skiing ended up winning that and like quit and it was pretty dope and then I was just all in for snowboarding and it was the best thing sidebar question Norway is like Obviously incredible in snowboarding with your guys' Olympic team. You got Cleveland, Tour Gear, just stacked, right? Oh, yeah. Now, is the ski racing the same? Like, are you guys stacked in ski racing for Norway? Like, crazy stacked. Yeah, they're <clears throat> the Norwegian skiers are insane. So, right now, we got this one guy, um, Kilda. He's just going off. He's winning everything, doing the gnarliest, like, um, ski races and just absolutely destroying it. He's an animal. That could like, have been you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That that guy is, is built like an ox. He's a crazy, crazy. He's probably the most like athletic or, or like well built guy you'll see. So going back, <laughs> the most well built. <laughs> yeah, I don't know dude, how to describe it, but that was though, they all like they it's, all it's insane. No, just know. imagine Torger on a heavy amount of steroids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's okay. like just a thick Torger. Just a thick Torger, you know. Does he have the vein popping out of his forehead too? <laughs> yeah, like vein, Torger? Veins everywhere, you know. Oh, veins yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. So I'm wondering you're you're how old did you say you got sponsored? Twelve? Yep. Yeah. So you're twelve. You're getting this pa- these packages, which is probably the best day of your life. Oh, it was insane. I, I thought I was going in there to get a T-shirt and something. And I got hooked up with the boards and jackets and pants, and I was just like blown away. I couldn't believe it for sure. So then you started doing, did you do regional contests to get into the big ones? Like, what did the arc of your competition career look like? Yeah, it was like some local small contests I started off with. 
um, like in my local hill and stuff and realized that uh, I had some type of potential. Like, um, and then there was like a really good, good crew um, in my local hill with like four dudes my age that was so into snowboarding. So we just kind of stuck together and it was such a great community in my local hill. So um, ended up just riding with them all the time, competing with them, traveling around in Norway. Um, and then we ended up like getting hooked up by a store, snowboard store in Norway to go to Switzerland, us four. And like, it was, it was super sick. So I like that grew my interest for sure for snowboarding and like opened my eyes that it's possible to actually get helped out to go snowboard all the time, you know? And, uh, I was lucky enough to get on DC when I was really, really young and I got really hooked up by some super good people like Nick Olson took me out. Yeah, big shout out to Nick big Olson. Shouts. He's the man. He brought me out here actually to Salt Lake. My first trip ever to the U.S. was here uh, for the launch, and I was 13 years old. And uh, my mom just sent me on a plane. I was like, I have no idea who you're staying with, but it, sure, it's great. Snowboarding's cool. Like, trust these people. And he and picked you up. He picked me up at the airport. Like I said, at his house with his wife and his two dogs, and it was the sickest thing ever. Yeah, I want to look back at my folder see if I got some photos of thirteen year old moms. Yeah, my I remember being up at Park City and that was and a good one. Super, was that the helicopter one? Yeah, oh, like wow. with a huge step down. What a way to start! It was insane with the hip. I remember in the bottom, and it was just the craziest thing. And I just blew my mind watching all these guys that I looked up to and kind of just uh, knew by uh, ear to mouth and and was hearing about. And it was really really cool. So my first trip to the states was just a hammer. And like Nick introduced me to like. Dead Lung, Lucas Magoon, wow. and like some, yeah, big, big dogs, and it was so sick to be like a kid just frothing, like jaw on the floor all the time, like just running around being stoked. Dude, you meet Magoon, Dead Lung, there's a helicopter at this giant <laughs> yeah. hip, like, wow, what was that? That must have been just nuts. Just mind-blowing, for sure, and I like just got starstruck all the time. Nick was bringing me around to so many cool people. Uh, I met like Bittner and, and Heike Sorsa back in, and like some super OGs. And uh, so he really showed me the ropes and who to look up for. And, like, yeah, that was awesome. All right. I'm genuinely curious. I think we ask every Norwegian on the show this. You guys got, you know, Marcus Cleveland. We call him Cleveland Steamer. Um, <laughs> you know, just so many lists of, you know, Turje. You got Torstein, Torgir, all kinds of weird Norwegian names going on. Just everybody, right? Why are the snowboarders from Norway... So fucking good. Good question, for sure. Um, I mean, it's not a huge country either, you know? It's like not a lot of people. No, it's five million people. Like, it's not a lot. Five million? Shit. It's million, like one yeah. American city? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. No, I think, I honestly think it's a, a mix between really good role models in snowboarding and uh, a really good community. Um, like, if you go out and snowboard in Norway in some resort, like, you'll always find a good crew, and, like, they're so including. When I was a kid starting off, like, so many people just wanted you to come ride and have fun, and it's a really sick snowboarding community in Norway. And then, you, like you said, you have the legends. Like, you look up to Torier and uh, Torstein and Terje and Andreas Wieg and Mikkel Bang, and, like, for me, it was uh, Stale and Alec and Torgier and, like, so many good riders just consistently coming up. And so it's a lot of, like... Uh, role models, you know, mm -hmm. that influence uh, a lot of kids uh, to go snowboard. And then you go out snowboarding and you have a lot of fun because the community there is super sick. Mm -hmm. You yeah. say role models, we say Viking blood and, you know. Same, same. Yeah, same, same. Same, same. <laughs> same, same, same. It's cool thinking about that too because it's such a small country and you might see them at a local resort and then that makes it like real and attainable, you know, like seeing somebody that came from where you're from that's done it. That that makes a lot of that's a great explanation. I feel like I've always attributed it because I've been to Oslo and spent some time snowboarding there, and it always seems like everybody's outside cross country skiing and yep. they're out in the snow and it's cold. And it seems like in America, a lot of people just lock themselves inside their house when it snows for the whole winter. Oh, yeah. Watch, get mad about the weather. Oh, it's super outdoorsy. Like everyone, if it's if it's if you're able to go outside, you're going outside. Like everyone's everyone's outside doing something and having some fun. So. As a kid, you always go play outside. If it snows, you're stoked and you run out and have some fun. And that's kind of what we grew up on. And everyone's skiing, everyone's cross country skiing, everyone's doing something. And if you're if you're not doing something, you're kind of getting left behind. It's kind of staying ho home and not hanging with anyone. It's not a lot of fun in the end. So I think uh, just the 
all around community is around going outside and having some fun. So it's a good good spot to grow up. I also got to take a quick second here uh, and address the fact that I'm wearing a Philadelphia Eagles jersey. I am not a fan of the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to be very clear about that. I lost a bet with our shipping guy, Danny, that if they had a worse record than the Patriots this year, I had to wear one a jersey on air. He was going to have to wear a Patriots jersey for about a week. Anyway, I lost the bet. Uh, just want to clarify. Sorry to derail. That's not very fair not to an you. Eagles fan. You have to wear this on air for all these people. He said to wear it in the back room for a week. I was so confident in the Patriots being ah. better that... But, but I will like take this time to... Maybe we should hit a smelling salt? What do you think? You ever hit one? I'm yeah. ready for one. Yeah, we I'm, hit some I'm at like, Baldface. But I got like a secondary one. Like after you uh, walk toward her up, like, I haven't got a freshie. Here, take a freshie. So, uh, <laughs> take a freshie. <laughs> Let's take a freshie. You get a salt. <laughs> you get a salt. It's like yeah, Oprah. No exciting. secondaries for anyone. And I even remember that secondary one being so heavy. Yeah, They're just is, as, yeah secondary is just as good. Yeah. So crack it and whack it. That's our motto. We just came yeah. up with it So now. you just press it? What you do you do? Squeeze it. Yeah, squeeze it. Crack it and whack it. Now you whack it. Oh, he went in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> my God. Is that more <laughs> more potent than a secondary? <laughs> that was insane. Oh, God. He's oh. Good bad. I started just watering batch. right oh. away. Oh, God. I had a stuffed up nose. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, those are strong. Those are some burners. <laughs> That's instantly, some potent. Instantly cleared potent my, uh, my nasal. It was all stuffed up. Oh, oh my God. That is, uh, those are run through wall smelling salts. Is that how you guys wake up every morning? Yeah, every morning it is. Chris just cracks. Like yeah. That just got my eyes yeah, so good. Right out of bed. Woo. You're good. Actually, oh my it would damn. be good to keep these by the bed. Right by the bed. It'd be good for Stony Buds. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's not as much of a morning Tank. guy. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm going to try it, dude. <laughs> You're good to go after one of those it. in the morning. Who mm-hmm. needs coffee when you oh can just run God. through walls? Yes. You know? You get up, you what immediately a great product. <laughs> it's just run holes. through your there's holes <laughs> through your, your room. There's just broken. Every broken night you walls. go like fix your walls and then you just run through them again. <laughs> there's a new one. Yeah, <laughs> fix a new drywall just, every night. I usually buy about yeah like five or eight four by eight sheets sheets, of, sheets of drywall up. at a time, and I just kind of daily repair, run right <laughs> run back through them. Oh, dude, I can't believe how heavy that hit. Do you think that would be good at the top of a contest run? So good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like if you if you gently hit it though, mm-hmm. if you don't go all in, I think that would get you get you pretty good. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't know. Maybe more so for like a big big line mm. if you're in the backcountry or something. Just get you amped up mm-hmm. if you know your line and you just gotta go ham. I think big air really would be the best. I was thinking oh. that too. Yeah. Dude, it might it would be good look. I, I heard you guys were talking to Sean about it. Fall through. Yeah, I fell through. Yeah, we. Oh, were, fancy. It's, 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 it's his agent, uh, Runky, dropped the ball. Yeah, on he's that. like he's he's like brick walling us. Yeah, I was looking forward to seeing him whiffing some sniffing salts I, on top of X Games this year. We did. I got a helmet template, and I <laughs> I got the template. We got some puzzle pieces together, but we just didn't follow through. We would like to start a run through wall smelling salts team. Uh, too bad you're already on Rockstar, because uh, but maybe they don't conflict. It's just a thing. It's a. It's, I don't think it conflicts. Yeah. You got an agent? Yeah, looking forward to seeing that team. I don't, actually. Mm. Okay, so we talk right to the source. We right don't have to, to the go source. That'd, that'd be great. Straight yeah. to me, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can wheel and deal. with Runky is tough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right, well, let's talk contests for a second while we're before we keep going with the let's arc of your career. Because I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the current state of contests? How do you think they could be better? How do you feel about where they're at? That's a good, good question. Um... So it's pretty complex where it's it's a lot of good stuff. It's a lot of stuff that's evolving in a in a difficult and hard way. Um but there's there's so many good and interested people in the industry uh and competing that I think could make a big change and and um in some way I think it needs to. Like I think for example big ears big ears just getting so um unrelatable for people to watch like can't figure out the difference between an 18 and a 19 if, unless you're a pro snowboarder almost. And it's kind of crazy. Um, so I've been thinking, we've been talking a lot about that actually. Like after the Olympics and stuff, we talked a lot about it with Red and Sean and those guys and had some interesting thoughts. Uh, like I think personally, uh, making all big airs head to head would be a really good move because it just makes it super, um, or it li- makes it a lot more easy to understand for the watchers. Like, you're just watching this guy going against this guy. You have a buildup of a story and a background, and you're like you're more riding against this guy and playing tactics that way instead of like riding a field of 30, 40 people. And it makes it more interesting to watch, I think. 
and it also makes you like more fun for the riders. It's more like build up and a fun story, and I think it's it would be a lot more fun to ride as well as watch. Um, and I don't know. Right now, it's it's so impressive to see what people are able to do in contests, and uh, so much respect for everyone pushing and 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 um, evolving and and doing whatever they do in snowboarding. Uh, and I think like the Olympics would be so fun to do some and other events too, but do some team stuff. Like let's get teams together. Like imagine in the Olympics, you'd go like Norway team. You had like two girls, two guys go against the U S team or whatever. Um, be kind of fun, different to watch. I think. How How many people would you have to, how many runs would you have to take if you went head to head? Would that be crazy? Maybe you do like a, a an open quali of some sorts where you have like a big, let's say you're 30 people and you get like 16 in to finals or to head to head rounds, something like that. So you get like eliminated a lot of the people out that way. It would be way. exciting. And then you get like 16 people head to head, something like that I think would be really cool. Oh, uh, knock watch. some of the field down. Yeah. And then First get have in an there. open qualies. Like it would be normal. fun to like go against your homie, try to punk him with a trick and It'd you be, know what his weaknesses are. Maybe. It'd be super fun. Yeah, or we also joked about it'd be pretty fun to go like some of the guys like Sage and Torga and those guys go in like first run cab nines and stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's say you get a couple of practice days in, and then on the day you don't get a single practice run. You just start off first thing in the morning with your run, be a contest. I think that'd be kind of cool. First people, run is the the run. People yeah. would get annihilated. Yeah, it'd be a oh tough. yeah. You know what bracket tournaments like head to head are great for is gambling because you can do True. like final four <laughs> style. And you try to pick all your people. So you're liking what he's saying. I'm just saying for gambling purposes, I really like it. <laughs> so you're liking what I'm he's saying. I'm liking what he's saying, <laughs> just for, you know, allegedly, for legal purposes. Dude, that does sound pretty exciting. The, the I excitement think it would level. be, yeah. The excitement level would be <clears throat> high and, like, the stories. and Because uh, that's up. when you could do your build-up, your intros that you're talking about. Like, mm-hmm. really hyping up these characters. Well, Hey, you know, moms, the Viking is here against whoever. And it would be cool. Yeah, you get to know the personality a little more. That's definitely yeah. interesting. But now talking about the 1900s and 2100s and these giant spins, it, it's it's an interesting deal. Like I definitely wouldn't want to be a judge because I, you know, let's let's just talk about X Games Big Air. I think that's yep. an interesting one too because because Cleveland won, and I loved the Todio 14. Was mm-hmm. that yeah yeah like just like a Nolly Nolly Todio yeah, yeah. 14, and then he did a back 19 yeah butter back 19 yeah butter back 19 ridiculous pretty ri- pretty ridiculous butter back it's just getting it's just getting rude yeah really <laughs> just getting to a point where it's like okay video game guy. shit yeah. yeah and then who got second uh takeru oh yeah so yeah, Taker. so sick yep. like he's get he's gotten bodied a couple of times mm-hmm. at x games big air and it was so dope to watch him just lace and put it down the front 14 but it's or front, what, front quad, 18, 18 quad it's like fully t- like dipped. oh it's like the gnarliest trick you could try Mm-hmm. Like it's insane, yeah. So you can't. I guess you, that's not a really good example where you couldn't really. You can't really argue, cle- like because I was with some people that were arguing that they they thought Talkers was better, right? And I I thought personally thought Cleveland's was better, <clears throat> yeah. But just being a judge, it's such a difficult thing, uh, to to decipher what is better in situations like that, right? Right, for sure. Um, and I think it's honestly really cool what they did with putting Cleveland's, uh, fourteen that high because it's so different and in- innovative uh, um and it's like if we're just going to continue to to score 18s and 19s higher and higher and higher then then no one's going to even bother trying something creative anymore you know so mm-hmm. i think that's really healthy to actually put that out there that it's possible to do smaller tricks creatively and mm-hmm. get rewarded for it and i think that's a really good change yes yeah, that's like right one direction. of the th- yeah that's like one of the things that i'm so glad to see because now, no, like, not everyone's just like, oh, I need to go one more 180. I need to do like another flip to be in there. No, you don't. Like, get creative with it. Try to step outside the box, and and it's really gonna pay off. So I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. I have a Patreon question for you mm-hmm. from uh, and it's something a lot of us want to know. And this is from Ron Stalman. For us normal guys, what is the key to spinning so fast? Ooh, yeah, spinning fast. It's it's just like doing a, the most aggressive turn off a jump and then just leaving it and really fast speeds. So you just like turn fast and, and grab your board and Us normal look guys over are your shoulder. turn and go flying way to the right, though. Yeah, like, but you go dead straight off the lip. Yeah, you got to like point it the opposite direction. You got to like try to alley-oop it, and then you end up turning pretty hard, and then that sets you up kind of straight. 
That's Hopefully. It. That's the secret. That's Sounds good. like death for some a normal guy. That's actually a really good point because Torgier said the key to a cab nine, he's goofy. He's like, I aim True. right. Yeah. Right. So I I really like that, thinking about off the jump. You so you, you know, you're you're kind of not heading the aiming the direction you're heading. Yeah. So if you're doing like a backside fourteen, for example, we'll say, you're aiming left, so your board stakes off straight. Yeah, you really want to go either straight or almost alley-oop, it's going to make it so much easier to land. Because if you're drifting over to the sides, you're bringing so much momentum with you to the sides, and you're just going to be, it's going to be impossible to stop your rotation, and your body's just going to have so much weight coming over from the side. So you really want to try to go alley-oop and then, uh, or straight, because then when your board gets under your feet, it's like all the weight goes right on top, and it like sets you up to just stop that rotation so much easier. Do you know where you are in the air when you're spinning that fast? Uh, it's like fragments. <laughs> it's like you just see some something that gives you a little bit of a hint of where you are, and then you just go for it. And it's more of a repetition kind of deal where you just feel it because you feel your board go around you, and you feel it like where you are more. You, you know definitely try to spot as good as you can, and you can tell like some dudes are so good mm-hmm. at spotting in the air. Like you look at Mark; it's kind of crazy looking at his clips when he does like sixteens, because you'll see his head like stop and then keep going and stop and looking at the landing and being so precise with it it's insane so you really want to try to spot as much mm-hmm. as you can but it's it's really fast and it's almost like you're just seeing some fragments in there fragments i feel like red's got it too red's got insane air winners oh yeah see him open up when the, it's i always think it's crazy when you guys like overcook a 14 and open up or something you're like holy shit yeah so let's just talk about the most recent one. You just got bronze at, or uh, silver at X Games. Bronze, bronze. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. bronze. All yeah, good. dude, that was fucking awesome, dude. It was cool, dude. It was a it was a hard course for sure. Probably the most like technical course I've ever ridden, to be honest. Uh, and we had some speed issues, which was a bummer because the course is really good, good built, but it was hard to to make it happen. Um, there wasn't a lot of space in between, it seemed like. No, it f- almost felt like hitting a pipe going just through the right, jumps. It was just right like hit it. after hit after hit, as it was super tight, but really, really fun, too. Um, and, yeah, finals there are hectic. It goes so quick, and you're just, like, running up, back up with the sled, and then dropping in basically again and not really, you know, get to see too much of what the other guys are doing almost. It's so quick. But then uh, mid-run, I was like, I wanted to do – some tricks that I didn't have speed for and I had to change it up and, and it worked out luckily, but so many guys were putting down good runs too. And, um, I'm, uh, like I watched, rewatched the whole thing and like Judd and red to me, put down some really good runs. That Judd's tricks on Judd's tricks on the quarter pipe jumps. Yeah. He was so superior on those. He like was two, shit two on quarter pipe. Oh yeah. yeah. Like he was riding that like a <coughs> good pipe, like doing back 12 to front 12 or back 10 front 12, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Only one uh, spinning backside off the heels yeah. on that thing, which is insane. nuts. Insane. Yeah. Like, he was absolutely destroying the pipe hits, and it was so sick to watch. Are you getting chatter of what other people are doing? Uh, a little bit, and, you, you know, we got some coaches up top and stuff, and they talk and They'll give tell you some you. suggestions and whatnot. And if back where you're from, do they have jumps like that? Like, how do you guys get so good? Uh, yeah, not really a lot of big jumps back home, but it's, uh, it's more of a uh, riding spots that are not that good and then getting over here and then just they're built losing so it you know just mm. building suspension yeah it's good it's like riding it's like playing basketball with a weighted vest and then you take the <laughs> you take the weighted vest <laughs> and off you're and like, you're Woo! good <laughs> you're jumping up there you're jumping up there yeah all right we got a guest question from none other than luke winkleman mm. i just gotta find it here homie all right here we go yo bomb hole you guys got my dog monzi in the booth hope you're enjoying them what a beaut uh, Mons, I'm always wondering what uh, you're thinking at the top of a course. You know, I always like to come up to you, dance a bit, give you some hugs, and, you know, always trying to hype up the squad. But I want to know what you're really thinking and feeling and, um, you know, what what you do to get ready for that. So, you boys enjoy it. Love y'all. Yeah, Luke. Monzi, I like that. Yeah, he's always Monzi. Dude, he's the man. Love Luke. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's a good question. Um, up top of a contest, I usually try to think about anything else but what I'm doing in the run, really. I try to, like, space out, don't want to watch too many people, and I go often talk shit with the with the homies, try to, like, talk about anything else but what we're doing in the run or whatever. 
Because I feel like the work's kind of put in that you're done with overthinking it, and now it's better to kind of try to reconnect or like disconnect a little bit and then turn back on when it's really time to go. I think that's the most hel- most healthy thing for me. Uh, like I got it explained pretty pretty funny by a guy that suggested like trying not to think about snowboarding too much during a contest where he said if you if you drive your car and you're supposed to go for a three hour drive and you get told that there's an animal going to jump out in the in the road at some point but you don't know where or when you're going to try to keep that attention as good as possible the whole way but you're not going to be able to for three hours but if you were going for a five minute drive or ten minute drive you're going to be able to hold that like attention on the road for those 10 minutes, five minutes. And that's like how he explained like, uh, that you should, uh, try to put your attention more like centered to where you need it. And when you need it, like turn it on when you're actually going. So I feel like trying not to overthink too much is good when you've like, after all the practice and shit, like you're done with what you're supposed to do. And then you just try to disconnect and then get back on in it when you're about to drop really. Mm. Yeah. Stay hollowhead until it's yeah time to be real hollowhead. What about music? You listen to music? Mm. I listen to music. Uh, I do. What are uh, we talking? Norwegian death metal or what? <laughs> no. Norwegian no, techno. I mean, where, where are we at? A little bit, a little bit of Norwegian techno, nice. but no, uh, <laughs> mostly old school rap for me. Really? Yeah. And then I got like the one one funny Norwegian song I play every time I actually go for a run or a contest run. But during practice, it's mostly like uh, old school hip hop and rap. What what and kind then, of groups are we talking? Rap groups. Uh, like a lot of red men, a lot of biggie, a lot of um thuggish, ruggish. Bone, you're, you're going nineties nineties hip hop. Bone yeah, thugs yeah. and harmony, just yeah, doing bone thugs and harmony. Yeah, bone thugs. Tail grab. That's yeah. what you need. Put another rib on the grill style. Yeah, that like MJ kind of uh, <laughs> bone, playlist. Bone, 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 bone. He's just flying through the <laughs> air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta kinda try to mellow it out a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm curious about this too. How many times in practice, did you lace your run? Uh, none. Really? Yeah. I c- kind of try to never do that. Really? Yeah. So like, you wanna I want to like, I want to try all my tricks, but I don't want to. I don't know. It takes so much energy. It's insane. And I want to like have tried every trick I'm going to do, but I don't want to put. I don't want to do them all in a run before, because it makes you a bit more like on your toes. I feel like you're, you're kind of putting it together on that uh, last r- or on those. R- counting runs under pressure and it like puts it on i think and I, I don't like trying it all together in one run before i don't know what it is but i just like trying it and if i've tried it even not landed it and like okay i'm good i know like i don't rotate it now i know like how much i need to did you do each one of the individual tricks yeah once at least yeah. okay that's really fascinating do you believe i've heard other contests people talk about like the arc of kind of confidence where you you like you don't want to over practice because yeah. then it kind of starts to decline at a certain point. Your confidence, yeah, for sure. And it's like you're more. I feel like I'm way more hungry if I don't like overdo the stuff during practice. Like if I do it, do it twelve, six or sixteen, whatever, like ten times. Then you're like you're not as on your toes when you go into it when it actually is your run. So I kind of like just trying it out, like getting a feel for it. Of course, it's nice to land and get a good feeling, but not, like, do it a bunch of times during a contest. Like, before, it's nice. Like, get your reps up in the preseason, you know, and get some tricks in. And then, <clears throat> sorry. And then, like, when it's contest time, uh, put a little pressure on yourself. Yeah, it's good. We've where talked. Do you, oh, where ahead. do you spend your preseason getting these reps in? Getting the reps up in, in uh, New Zealand to start with in August, uh, September, and then over to Sauce Fay. You guys Charlotte. all just cruise together. Yeah, on. it's like kind of the same program every year. It's funny, uh, but it's like so good spots too. I love Wanaka in New Zealand, and, and then uh, Charles Beckinsale builds a really sick park in Sauce Fay, and then uh, Stu by for some big jumps again, and then after that, it's kind of like some contests come around, or you go to the U.S. to ride a little bit when it starts opening up here in Copper and stuff. So, yeah. Rado icy jumps. Yeah, that's like the start of the U.S. season. How that Rado ice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk to you guys about autumn headwear. I'm currently wearing the autumn headwear, bombhole collab. Autumn's just a brand we back, buds. That's a good looking hat. Brad Allband designs them. He's nice with it. They got little Jeff. Jeff Richards. He's a founder of it. He kicks ass. It's just cool people making cool hats. They're 
motto is style matters. So they got stylish riders, Cooper, Cooper Whittier, Cannon Cummins are some of the young style gods out there. You got Danimals rocking the autumn headwear, Sam Taxwood rocking it. Uh, head on over to autumnheadwear.com and use promo code BOMBHOLE for 20% off if you want just a great beanie. That's all, buds. Yeah, they got the resi tip for guys like me. They got the anti-resi. They got the fisherman's friend. I mean, they got every style covered, The fisherman's right? friend is <laughs> what Julian, our producer, would be rocking. Yeah. Oh, curl. He's ready to hit the dock right now and go catch some fish <laughs> in Seattle. And it's perfect. All right. We got some big news coming at you from the bomb hole. Signups are live for the bomb hole cup, which is April 1st and 2nd at Brighton Resort right here in Utah. It's going to be a giant event. Most spectators Brighton had ever seen last year, according to Jared. So day one is a bank slalom for all ability levels. Day two is a park showdown. So we got a park jump, a bunch of rails. We got a limo we're going to be jumping over. All ability levels both days. So bank slalom is really cool. We got all different types of classes in accordance to age group or ability level. We got a pro class. We got an industry class. We have an adaptive class for the non-able-bodied. We got a vintage boards class for boards pre-2000. We got age groups. We got Grom, 15 to 29, 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus classes. We got skiers on boards this year. So that's really fun. If you're a skier, you can't ski, but you can come snowboard. We have a split board race. So you split board up, race down. So fun if you're a racer, granola eating split boarder, all ability levels coming out for Bomb Hole Cup April 1st. And then day two is a park showdown. So we got open class. We got Grom. We got pro. The session is just absolutely electric. Last year was legendary. We want this thing to be a community building event. So if you're a member of the snowboard community and you want to meet new people, you want to meet pros, everybody's going to come hang out. If you're a listener of the Bomb Hole, come meet other listeners. It's our big event where our online community gets together for a couple days, April 1st and 2nd at Brighton. Again, signups are live, bombhole.com. And uh, hopefully we see you guys there. So, uh, Steamer, Cleveland Steamer, <laughs> says that you suck at FIFA. Oh, damn. Damn, just throwing them out like That's that. That's brutal. Huh? That sounds like a challenge. Dude, that guy can game. Yeah. I'm not afraid to lose and game into that guy. Like He's, got he the spent, fast he's put in some up. hours. The reps are up. Dude, he's just sick at shredding, and his fingers are nice with the gaming, huh? For sure. That guy spends some hour in front of the PlayStation. It seems like a, PlayStation. a great life. Like, just go chuck <laughs> what in life. the park all day, <laughs> game, at, game game at night. What's better than that? Yeah, that's, what a beautiful life. All he life. does. Life of steamer. Yeah. And he's really good at both of them, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh, is, is Mons nice with it? He's like, no, he sucks, dude. <laughs> it's the only thing I can beat. Or he's like saying like he loves beating, beating you at FIFA. Damn, I, yeah, I dude, he was smoking me at X Games. We were playing a lot. The only only game I can get him in is uh, Mario Kart. Oh, you got him in Mario got him Kart. In Mario Kart. <laughs> okay, yeah. good, good. You're well, we, all good. We yes. happen to have. <laughs> we got a guest question from Steamer. Here we go. Oh, nice. What up, Mons? It's Marcus. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question. Like, how do you figure out your slope style run fresh off, like going into it? Um, and then also, I want you to uh, shotgun a beer. Let's go. <laughs> Putting me on the spot. He's putting you on the wow. spot. Okay, how, what order are we doing this? Uh, why don't you shotgun a beer and then tell us? Yeah. So there's a knife behind you. It's Bozong's knife. It's uh, stuck open. It's behind the camera. Be careful with it. Yeah. I don't know if you can thumb gun or not. Um, no nails. Okay, no nails. Okay. Don't stab yourself here. I'm gonna have to, this could be a liability. I'm have to have him sign a uh, sign a waiver. Sign a waiver here. Are you shotgunning beer? Oh, okay. He's cracking. I'm a little bit. You're doing okay. All right. So I'll come up and tell you. Well executed shotgun. You ever seen a move called the beluga? Not familiar. Instead of a shotgun, you do that and you crack it, but then you blow. <laughs> and it gets the guy well, next seen, to you. <laughs> I've seen some people do that to the I've people seen, next to them. Yeah, I've seen bridges on. do that. It'll be like, you ever seen a beluga? <laughs> They'll crack it and the dude next to him just gets hosed. Oh, that always gets you good and ready for a question. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be ready to burp for the next 15 minutes. Yeah, he will be burping. So I'm going to say, Buds, that was the least amount of spillage of any shotgun Dude, that we've clean, had. That was clean, man. That was clean. Keep it clean. Yeah, no, uh, for the slope uh, question. Um, Just to paint a picture, you show up to this course, you got a million rails, you got a million jumps, 
And you got to figure out what the hell you're going to do on an interview. True. That's kind of what he's asking. Like what against do you the do? best of the best. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely a process. And, and um, at an event like X Games, we're so lucky to get big amounts of like practice. We get more practice there than anywhere. So that, I feel like I try to spend my time wisely and use all the practice I can get. And uh, I'm kind of a comfort snowboarder, if I can call it that. Like, I need some time to get comfortable and, and like, get, get the reps up. So at X Games, I try to use all the practices and, and ride as much as I can and, like, get to know the course as well as possible. And it is a fun process because you're starting off, like, thinking, oh, you're looking at it like, oh, I could think I could do this and this and then go over there and do that trick. And then you start hitting the rails or the jumps, and then you're like, nope not going to happen. That's way too scary or that's too chill or whatever. And you kind of p- pace it together and you got to kind of stress it or rush it a little bit because you don't have infinite amount of practice for sure. So you're trying to like push the levels of how difficult stuff you can do and how often you're going to land it because you have just a couple tries to do it. And you got to be right on that edge of, of difficulty and, and uh, the possibility of landing it, you know. And it's, it's hard because uh, sometimes you'll figure it out right away and you like start practicing the, the difficult tricks and you have a lot of time doing those. And then it's not that crazy in the end, you know. But uh, sometimes you got to change it up last minute and, and uh, get new with it. And it's kind of like I love that process, though. It's such a fun, like, mental process. Like after your first practice day, you go home and like, OK, was that the right move? Or you're, was that rail run? Like, was that better than those guys? Like checking out what they they doing like you take a couple runs off you stand up top watch everyone else like okay i think i'm like setting the couple top ones like that's a good rail run and then you try to pace jumps together and look at what other people are doing because you always want to be like up there of course and want to try to be challenging everyone else on their best tricks so it's a it's a long process uh, usually but it's so fun because when you get it in the end and you put it together it's just the most satisfying thing like you land it and you do it how you pictured it, and it's just like all the stress of a of and the amounts of work put in just comes out, and it's awesome. Mm. You're saying Marcus though is a little different, right? Yeah, that is so funny because Marcus is just stupid talented. Like like I said earlier, it's almost getting to a point where it's rude, you know. And uh, like I can go practice at X Games and do like we start practice off first couple of runs, and I'm like, okay. Uh, did board slide on the first couple of rails, like did a couple of 360s and 540s on the jumps. And then I'll like, we've done three runs. I'm like, how's it going, Mark? Because you're getting a feel for it. And he's like, yeah, I did my run. What do you mean? Like, no, my, 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 my finals run, I did it last run. Like, I think I'm going to go in and chill. After, honestly, like we have three hours of practice. He could go in after an hour. And when people are just starting to like try stuff, he'd be like, I'm good. I'm good. And he's in, he's not even watching. No, no, he's chilling. He doesn't. <laughs> not worrying too much. He's just like whatever. No, it's it's so it's so sick to watch him ride. Honestly, he just picks it up so quick, and it all goes to show like the amount he rides back home. He's like putting in the hours, and it's not because he's just like talent doesn't come from just nowhere. You know, he's put in the hours. He's riding so much. He's probably riding more than anyone. You know, and that's why you're so damn good. Because you're putting in hours, putting in the work, and he's definitely doing that. Just people aren't kind of thinking about it because he's just home. He's just at home riding more than anyone. You know, it's kind of cool. And you, how many days of practice do you get? Like, the way you sounded, maybe one or two? What are we talking? Yeah, like at a – depends. At like a World Cup, it's two days. Olympic, it's like three, four days. At but they're X usually Games, short. Days. They're, like, they're like 45 minutes a lot of times, right? It's like yeah, not it's that like long. depends. At X Games, we get it ton like you get sled laps and you got like three hours a day so it's so much that'll but, add up yeah that's like an, a lap takes five minutes with a sled you know so it's uh, you, you're getting so much riding in but at like a world cup you're doing like one and a half hour a day Chair we lift, get like five yeah laps. we get like five laps yep and then you're like okay that was it five mm-hmm. laps and then another day of five laps and then you go the next day i'm always curious i've loved watching practice too because you see everybody's got a different cadence of which they warm up like you said Marcus comes in and he's doing like a 18 run two or something, right? Yeah. How long does it take for you to do like a 12 or a 14? Like what's your, what's your arc to get there? Are you like front three, back three, back 14? Or is right. 
you know. No, it's definitely changed over the years. It's kind of yeah. funny because when I was a kid, it's all you always thought it was like, okay, you do the 360, then the 720, then the 1080. And then as you get more comfortable, you can like hit a jump and then just try it, really. Like, it depends on the on the trick because like I'm way more comfortable spinning front side and switch back side than I am spinning back side and cab. So like a front 14, I just like if I tried the jump once, I could do a front 14. But like if I'm doing a cab 14, I need some time. I'm definitely needing some some cab fives and sevens and tens in there, you know. So it depends on how comfortable you are with the trick. But it's like it's definitely a process and it depends on the jump and how comfortable you are. But sometimes after like X Games, you have practice on that course a bunch. And right before finals, we get like 30 minutes of practice, three, four runs. And you're just going right off the bat, for kind of first, second run, like you're you're in mm -hmm. it. So it's uh, it's just the how comfortable you are. X Games wants you up there though, being the best you can be. You know, yeah, that's their show. show. You know, dude, they're putting it on for yeah, the sure. More like, you giving practice, you so the much better practice. The show's gonna be. There's that's a smart. reason that's like a lot of the time it's the heaviest yeah, and the, highest level the of never riding because yeah, that's because cool. they're they're just putting out so much riding for for everyone. It's awesome. It's a show. It's really cool. Yeah, I really like the. Like started off, you did front one and then Hardaway switch back to transfer. Yeah. I thought that was a cool right out of the gate. Thank you. Yeah, that was a scary one for sure. First, uh, I like took me two or three days to actually get to try that. I I wanted to do that trick and then I was like, I don't know, man. It's I, I don't know if I'm gonna try that because it's just so scary and the consequences are pretty brutal transferring like that. And th just the first row was so short, you had to be super quick about it. Um, so it was it was scary, but it worked out. Like they lined up pretty well, and mm -hmm. it was it was cool. You know, it's kind of a damn shame though. Thinking about that is, you know, the riding at X, both men and women, was aside from the the snowy pipe for for men's finals, was like a little bit of a letdown, especially for those athletes that train so hard and and weren't able to do the runs that they've been working on because they could only go eight feet feet out instead of twenty feet out. But you know, the thing since it's so fresh because it's the most recent contest. Uh, obviously there was like little gravy and fucking. <laughs> they had like all the the influencers and stuff there, and like everybody was just talking about how bad the the like show was, and it took away from the riding. Yeah, and I was kind of like, guys, can we just talk about the fucking riding? Because it was it's still it, going on days after. Yeah, you're hearing more about that than you are the tricks, and mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy. What are yeah, your thoughts was, on that? It was it was weird for sure, and it was a kind of a surprising and weird move that I wouldn't think X Games would do in a lot of ways. But at the same time, I want to give props to X Games. Like, it's the first year they have people back after COVID. Mm -hmm. They're putting up, like, the biggest and best event for riders that, by far, during the year. It's like, we're so well taken care of in the Riders Lounge and, and how we get sleds for so many days. And it's just an insanely good setup. And, yeah, it was some weird influencing, snowboarding, I don't know, people there that was... Not very cool. Like the 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 after big air young gravy thing was so weird to witness. Like I went up to Marcus, gave him a hug, and then all of a sudden they were like, "So congrats to the big air finalist." And then we got young gravy, and then they started saying, "You know, it was just like a weird, weird situation for sure. <laughs> it was super weird." So there's some questionable moves, but at the same time, uh, yeah, X Games. Are, they're really putting it on, and and a lot of props to those guys. They're they're killing it in a lot of ways too. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun for the spectators. I was, you know, when when uh, Mark put down the last run of the day, like clutch, like an stomps animal. it, and that you're just crazy. like, it's just ice water veins. I love the, I love the the final run, kind of puts it down, and you get up and you yell, and dude, it's, it's always fun. So crazy. Twice, two years in a row now. That's mm -hmm. happened with Marcus and Mark, uh, where Marcus got up in first place and then marks up top as the last rider to drop and just puts it down he is yeah ice cold it's insane what yeah, an where animal does that he come is from where do you how do you figure that out yeah I like Instinct i said at granny is like i'd love to be in that guy's head for a day and like just see how that thing is like mm -hmm. he is a mental machine yeah fun stuff fun stuff fun uh, well stuff. this is actually a question we always we always talk about on the show uh good good since we have a competitor here ah. do you view a debate topic do you view snowboarding as an art form or a sport i guess it's you could call it both it's like uh an independent way of your expressing yourself and if you want to call that art you can i guess 
But uh, I don't know. I view it as a very because I wasn't I was an alpine ski racer before, and that's definitely a sport, you know. Where snowboarding, you have so much, uh, so many aspects of it, and so much you could do, and so much freedom compared to that. Where you can, even if you're competing, you can still express yourself in so many ways. Where if you're going down gates, you're just going as fast as you can down that tightest line. But here it's like, oh, you can do different lines, different tricks, different style. You can wear whatever clothes you want. You can do, be yourself. So it's like, I don't know what I would describe it as, but it is, a, it is the coolest thing I know for mm -hmm. sure. Mm. You know what uh, Jamie Lynn said during his episode? I remember that he described snowboarding as just like in passing. He's just like, it's a vehicle for self-expression. And I was like, fuck, that's, that's good. A good. That's a very good quote. That's good stuff. Yeah. Because that, that's what you just said, basically. You know. I, yeah, fully agree. It is a, a way to express yourself, and there's no limits to it, which is really, really cool. Yeah, you're skiing those gates. It's all time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't, that's, judges don't get yelled at. No. Good for the judges. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's, easy. it's <laughs> like they say in golf, there's no pictures on a scorecard. But yeah, no pictures on and a scorecard. And I hear you're, eight, you're an ace golfer. I love to golf, but I, I'm not... I'm not crazy good or anything but i'd love to love to have a good round, round of golf we have uh i just was talking to tour gear and he basically just kind of said tell him uh ask him to tell about his golf experience with tour gear stale <laughs> and marcus and what happened <laughs> that was really funny i uh brought yeah i i like talked to torgus torgus has been golfing a little bit uh he's like a pretty decent golfer and stale and, and marcus olmstad is not been golfing at all and like we wanted to go for a round of golf and i like checked it out you don't need to have like any green card or whatever for it to go on this course and we went there and like brought a bunch of beers and and was golfing on teams and uh it was pretty funny like uh stall we all got pretty juiced up and uh it was just a great round of golf and we had a little went home to my place after made some drinks and they got a bit rowdy. I think Torgay Torgay got the most uh, cloudy out of out of us all for sure. Cloudy. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, You're looking for the adjective. He's using yeah. good, good vague words. Yeah. Good, very, very very cloudy. Vague. Yeah. He got a bit cloudy for sure, but uh, it was just super funny, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was a really fun time at the golf course. We were doing like every every par par three it was like close to the pin and loser had the shotgun or every par five it was like longest drive and loser team had the shotgun it was a fun so who's got the worst who's got the worst swing you've seen worst swing yeah <laughs> damn uh yeah i gotta my i gotta might have to call out, call out Stolly actually. Oh, he's got a shit swing. Yeah, he got a shit swing. <laughs> <laughs> there, is there a lot of golf courses? Got to be out working there? on it, huh? Is there a lot of golf courses out there? Uh, a little At bit, home? nothing crazy. Yeah. Uh, there's some go golf courses for sure, but they're not like they're not as nice and loose as in the states. Like it's hard to get a golf cart, which is a bummer. Oh, and really? In the states, you always get a golf cart and and uh, drive around and uh, get some beers on and just cruising around, you know, having some fun with the boys, but. It's uh, definitely a bit more straight arrow back home. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, Buds, I think it's a good time to hit a Patreon question. Let's do it. Let's talk about Patreon for a second first. Okay. Uh, Patreon is basically a subscription where you can pay to support us. There's as little as $5 a month, Buds. And we freaking appreciate you guys. It's why we're able to come here and be idiots and do this podcast <laughs> along with our sponsors and people that buy merch. So thank you guys so much. But uh, yeah, fire up a guest, uh, uh, a Patreon question. I will. This is from uh, Billy the Kid. And uh, he's asking for a friend. What hair product do you use? <laughs> uh, yeah, no hair products for me. Natural. Going all natural. Yeah, just uh, winging it. I wonder so, if Billy the Kid must have seen you on some interview or something. He's like, that guy's hair's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must have been summertime. Summertime salty. Yeah, summertime salty. Going so you, we're, ta we're, talking, we're talking nothing. Nothing. So no soap, no nothing. Oh yeah, I do. I do some shampoo <laughs> and in the shower for sure. Do you, do yeah. you condition? I'm not shampoo? full raw dog. Okay. No, for All sure. Right. Yeah, there's some there's some shampoo in there. Yeah. No conditioning. Yeah. How's the dandruff looking? No, 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 no dandruff for me. Yeah. Buds, what about you? Uh, what do I use? Yeah, what... I use a little bar of soap in the back that you might have seen all summer <laughs> <laughs> outside the spigot of the bomb hole. Actually, uh, there's a homeless guy that showers behind <laughs> our 
behind our office. There's a bar of it soap and It started with a full bar, unless you put that there. I don't no, know. I never put it there. There was a full bar, and then towards the end of the summer, there's just a little used up bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then at some point, we, we used some towels to clean something up. And then we left him outside, <laughs> and then he commandeered those towels. He's really, he's yeah. really, uh, he, yeah, he's been. I think he's living in a dumpster. I don't know. He's he's making it. Yeah, I think he might be living under your desk, buds. <laughs> yeah, he's just. <laughs> <laughs> he found his way into the dog door, and he's just <laughs> sleeping under the desk. All right. So again, no no product. <laughs> yeah, no product. <laughs> just so, just yeah. so we know. Oh, okay. Just <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's keep things moving here. Let's okay. let's talk about the old Olympics. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about round one Olympics and your experience there. Oh, show. Yeah. It was a yeah, round one Olympics is uh, Korea, twenty eighteen. Uh, that was a crazy one for me. I was, uh, I went there my first Olympics ever. First of all, and then like coming from Norway, we have a really stacked team. So I was so stoked to make that team, and uh, it was me. Torger, Stahl, and Marcus, such a good crew to go there with. Like, really good dudes. We're all good friends and decent, decent crew. Yeah, yeah. decent. Oh, we had a, such a good time. Some might say half yeah. decent, half decent. Dec plus, plus, maybe dec minus. Dec minus. <laughs> and then uh, when we got there, it's course is fun. Like, it's really sick and great practice days. <clears throat> and we had slope first, and um, qualifications came around. We all qualified for finals, all four of us, which is. Such, such a sick thing like we're all sharing that joy and um going into finals feeling good and and, and uh, riding really good i felt i like, didn't fall once in practice and like was feeling ready for it like uh super on it and then um last like probably last practice run to be honest came around and i clipped a rail doing a backside hardway 270 on and went forward landed on my shoulder and like took a super heavy slam it was really icy and like landed on my shoulder really hard and broke my sternum and three ribs and and my AC joint was like level five separation. Wow! The heavy heavy little impact. How many levels do they go up I've to? I've never even heard of a level five. Shit? Like three is like bad. Really? Yeah. So level five is the highest you can go where it gets pushed up, and then you got level six where you push the collarbone down into your body, kind of. Level Ooh. five, your arms pretty much left at the handrail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's looking pretty crazy still because I didn't do surgery on it. Oh, it's still so crazy. Pop Sad that thing out. Pop that thing out. Like got that. Oh my all popper. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's, Come on. It's like man. All, this is a family show. <laughs> it's all moving and and and. I've never seen still. anything like that, dude. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. That's I was just joking about leaving it at the arm up at the rail. <laughs> <laughs> that's a result of a ping right there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good ping. That's, that's a like good when ping. you go on, you ping. You're like, oh. God. You probably had a solid air. like half second in That's the air. Like, like, realizing that you're bad. so fucked. Yeah. yeah just realizing Because it was that a gap about though, right? to get fucked. It was a double rail, uh, double kink rail, and uh, I like clipped the beginning of it doing mm -hmm. Hardway 270. And that just in the air, I was like feeling my body go forward and not in a good way. Knowing you're just going to Knowing you're going to get and bodied. And right done. away, like right when I hit the snow, I was like screaming and like pain and aggression, really. Like I was so pissed off because I felt it right away that it was. That I was kind of broken off, and it was I was just so pissed off. Mark Clavin said you were the guy who was going to get gold. Wow, that's right. He was there shooting, and you were flossing your runs. And oh wow, that's really nice I mean, of him to say. Can't be that's the awesome. first time you've heard that, right? You're doing looking really good. I was feeling good at least. Like I, I honestly didn't like have a hand down and practice. Like I, I was lacing my runs, and I was feeling really, really good. But. Like it all it, condition changed. It was hard, like conditions out there that day, and uh, you could never know. But it was really fun to ride that day. Uh, so that was a big bummer. Um, my my family was out there, like my mom, dad, and my brother. So it's such a bummer. Like they saw me, dude. The craziest thing was actually that I when I got broken off, I was like screaming in pain, and they were like coming over, a bunch of uh, sweet Koreans um, taking care of me, and they were putting me in this sled to go down. But then they strapped me from shoulder to shoulder and like tighten it up and i just got so bummed out like i had to get out of there like i was telling them like please let me out please let me out of this place like i gotta get out. i can't be in here this is i'm in agony like from shoulder to shoulder i didn't even know what shoulder was hurt because it was just hurting all the way across and so i got out of there and snowboarded down instead and they were like so anxious of me snowboarding down but i was just like so much better than than laying down that thing and the snowboard down past my mom and dad and they're like oh god they knew what happened because the course closed and everything and uh, 
hospital and they really wanted me to have surgery but uh really good physio lars um he was like talking to the people at stedman clinic and dale and they're the big bosses and they were saying i might not need to and didn't get surgery which i'm really happy which i'm really happy about just did a lot of rehab and and yeah, turn out good. It's looking, it's looking crazy. It's a good party trick, but it's it's working just it fine. It looks like you probably could have got some surgery. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> visual wise, it's, those it's Koreans were right surgery. about yeah. the surgery. I don't know. Be. Stedman's like highly acclaimed, but I yeah. don't know, man. That's it. <laughs> fucked up looking shoulders. That <laughs> I've never seen one that looked like that. No, it's kind of crazy. So that did must it have hurt would... for a long time. It did. Yeah, it sucked for a long time. <clears throat> that shit really hurts. So. It was a it was a good rehab of like probably five six months or something. I'm um, curious to just put yourself. You're like you've realized that your Olympic dreams have flown out the window. You're probably like getting checked out in a Korean hospital somewhere. That must have just been fucking a low point. Such a low point. Like it's uh, I got some photos from when I was in the hospital, and you can just tell you're like, oh god. Yeah, it just looked miserable. And it was like, it was hurting, but it was mostly me just being sad and bummed out, to be honest. Like, I was. You worked hard. I was really, really bummed out. And, uh, you know, at that point, like, my first Olympics, I I felt good. And, like, it it just feels like everything's falling apart, but it's not, you know, it's kind of a, it's a good thing, too, a lot of times. It's been for me, at least, getting injured, it's been kind of healthy. Because, at least for my head, you realize how much you love snowboarding and you, like, get into a, a state of rehab and a state of appreciation for snowboarding because it sucks doing rehab and you're just wanting to get back so bad that when you get on your board again you're you're just so stoked you're so ready to get out and enjoy it to the fullest and like have a lot of fun on your board again so it's it's once in a while it could be healthy for your head to get like a rehab in there that you makes know sense it, it reburns like when you when you snowboard all the time you take it for granted yeah mm-hmm. when you get broke off and you got to sit on the couch and you it's taken away from you it rebuilds the flame 100 percent. so when i was going home from that olympics sitting there like all taped up and shit i was watching the olympics from back home in my couch and i was like damn this is like i gotta get back doing this and it really fuels you in a lot of ways and and it's it could be healthy for you for sure. It what has been for me for my motivation and just trying to take tar- charge in that way. Hard hitting question. Yeah. What was the learning experience from that? Uh, I haven't done a lot of backside hard way 270s again. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Stay away from uh, that shit. You're that's clear. for sure. Uh, no more pings. No more pings. Uh, take no, a wide line. If you're going to do that one, take a wide the line. S- take the a wide scariest line. sound <laughs> anyone wants to hear <laughs> oh, at yeah. that rail is the ping. For sure. No, the, the the actual learning experience is is that it's I don't know I think it's very easy to get caught up in the moment and like burying yourself in the feelings and emotions of disappointment in a way, but it, it's so much bigger than that in a lot of ways where you just like if you're in it for snowboarding you're in it for the long haul and it doesn't really it's just it's just fueling your fire inside of you more than it's ruining really mm-hmm. like whatever if I could have done well then okay but. Like, I I just kept loving snowboarding. It didn't really matter in the end, you know? So, uh, I don't know. And then you got, and then let's talk well, about round like, two. You were like, see you there in four years, but how about having your family there? That must have been yeah, it was, pretty important. Yeah, it was, it was so cool. Like, my family's really supportive, and they're really dope. And it was so cool that they took uh, their travel out to Korea uh, to watch. It was awesome. If you're alone, that could be a pretty... Scary, oh yeah, good point. Yeah, scary you're, you're thing. I guess I was there. getting that. Yeah, true. My mom was was with me in the hospital for for some time there, uh, which was dope. And uh, and yeah, it makes you feel a bit more safe, I guess. Some some people that you know taking care of you, and uh, that was nice for sure. And then let's talk about when you go back to the Olympics yeah. four years later. <laughs> yeah, were you listening to the end. Rocky anthem on the way over? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just rebuild. <laughs> Actually, that was a crazy crazy start to the this uh, Olympics in 2022 that I. We traveled over there, and once I got in there, first practice day, like I was going to the lift with uh, Marcus and Stale, and all of a sudden, our like team Norwegian doctor comes over, like Mons, could you please come over here? And I was like, oh god, did I just test positive for COVID? Because it was so COVID restricted and crazy. Uh. She was like, yeah, I gotta talk to you. Can you please step away from the other guys? And I was like, okay. And she was, yeah, um, a person that sat two rows ahead of you on the flight just tested positive for COVID. So it's uh, you're sitting in a 
close enough area that you're in um, isolation for the next seven days. So that was that my first practice day in slope style for the Olympics. I just got like the the message that uh, you got to ride alone, take the chairlift alone. You can't be close contact with anyone uh, while riding. Don't talk to anyone, basically. And uh, when after riding, you got to take your own car, not like the bus with everyone. And then you got to go to your room and we got to give you food and you got to stay in your room for the entire time. You can't do walks or whatever. And then you got to get to go practice the next day again. So for the first seven days of the Olympics, I was in isolation, just riding, uh, riding practice and not being able to talk to anyone over the, other than over the phone. So that was probably the biggest mental battle I've ever had in my life. Like sitting in my room by myself, getting dog shit food to my to my door like because it's a cafeteria and it was pretty it was pretty shitty food there the during this olympics good internet but you could yeah it was i bet that was good but uh, then you couldn't like pick your own food at least and then like, like just got some food that was not the best and then uh during when you're snowboarding the the, the most um the best thing is to talk to your homies about your concerns or about your feelings about what you think about your run or whatever and like I had nev- no one to to talk to about what I was doing in practice, so it was so weird. Like could, sitting like, by myself, him. I had to like turn music full volume up and like convince myself we were just chilling. This is so fu- <laughs> like this is so fun. <laughs> this is awesome. Like, talking, I don't care. On like, the chairlift, you know, you're talking to him. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm talking to myself the whole way up, being super schizo, and just uh, trying to trying to convince myself it's all good. You know, the whole way. Uh, so that was that was a crazy feeling during the slope style comp. Um, qualified for finals, didn't land my run in, in finals, but but it was it was a really like mental heavy experience. Mm-hmm. I was amping myself up, watching the MJ documentary every day, like getting motivated, trying to stay up, like uh, not let the negative thoughts come like come in and take control. That's a footnote. Watching the MJ documentary during Hit Olympics, night. yeah. And then how did uh, how did Big Air go for you? Yeah, we went down to Big Air, no longer in isolation, which was super nice. Um, and uh, qualified through the finals with Marcus. No, uh, yeah, with Marcus. Right? Yep. And then um, going in there was, of course, super nervous. Was feeling like got broken off in the last Olympics. And I really wanted to redeem myself. And I thought that was my chance in slope style because I'm I kind of feel more of a slope style rider than a big air rider. And um, going into big air, I just didn't have too much expectations, uh, but I really wanted to do good because it was like like last opportunity now to redeem myself from last the last Olympics and um, started off doing like my biggest trick, my first run, front side eighteen landed it really good, and that's like the James situation. Um, and then uh, in slope style finals, I learned back 16s and d- did, them, did them there for my first time and hadn't landed one yet on the big air jump, but went around and did one in the big air. Uh, my second run landed it, bit hand heavy. So, but I was sitting in second place for, uh, before my last run, before like dropping in for the third run. And then they like restocked the order. So you drop second to last. And then like right before. Uh, I drop. I think both Red and Iwaki Kinotake beat me down from the podium. So I was like sitting in fourth or fifth place, and like that whole time I was like hoping, like praying that like, I can stay up in podium position and drop in with a medal, you know. And then all that just shatters, and you got to go through this mental battle again of like, that's fine, that's fine, <laughs> that's cool, that's <laughs> good for you guys, that's great, that's awesome. I got this. I can still land. I can still land. I can still land. And then, like, I knew I had to land it so much cleaner than the, the first one because I was, had some hands down. And it was a very new trick for me, but ended up landing it, like, craziest. And I knew that I had, like, two and a half points or something up to make the podium. And I landed it super clean and couldn't believe it. And just, like, the biggest rush of emotions and explosions of, of just crazy thoughts and, and feelings rushing out. It's a It's a weird feeling, man. Like, competition is crazy, but it's, like... When you make it happen, it's the craziest feeling in the world. And um, that at that place, too, 
with like the background of getting broken off four years before and at the Olympics and everything, and last chance, like final run, all that shit. And it was just like the best feeling ever. So that was that was an awesome moment for me. That's what we call a Cinderella story. <laughs> yeah. So then you got you did the yeah, med- medal se- ceremony. Yes. Tell true. The <laughs> I landed did. and I I actually came into second place. I, I was th- I was just looking at the podium really like third place what I was like aiming at but I got really good score for that so last run and I went into second place and got silver which is amazing and uh, super stoked to get get out of there with a silver medal and uh, yeah like had the best team around me dude like uh, honestly uh, before going in there like Marcus Cleveland was probably like the biggest favorite out there to take a medal or two if not like his he just came off um x games taking three medals like he was coming in super hot and just was very unlucky to not make it happen unfortunately but like couldn't believe what like great guy that guy was like he was just coming up to me with the most genuine biggest hug and smile and like was so happy for me and and stalley too having a silver medal from the olympics in his pocket before too it was just like so fun like i I, i'm so lucky to be able to enjoy that with them and not just kind of i I think a lot of people just have to have to enjoy that by themselves you know but they're sharing that joy with me and it was just the best thing ever and uh question did you did you party after you found out we did we did (laughs) it was like super hard to get (laughs) beer in there though like your liquor it was really restrictive you couldn't buy it in in the camp you couldn't go outside the camp but somehow, I think a lot of nations brought a bunch of beer from their country. Ah. So, like, we got hooked up, I think it was by, by Germany or Netherlands or something. Sounds about right. Of, yeah, right? The Germans pretty much beer. have to bring beer. That's like They had a bunch mandatory. of beer, and, and we met downstairs in, like, a gaming room where they had some ping pong tables and, and, and some stuff. And, like, one of the snowboarders had a DJ set with them and, like, played music. It was, it was pretty cool. Like, nothing crazy, but good. A good little ender. You turn for sure. up or what? For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. But yeah, it was. Sounds like a great moment. It was great for sure. That was awesome, man. Um, where does that put you? How old are you? Are you gonna be going to the next Olympics? Yeah, I I am looking to go to Italy next Olympics. Twenty six. Um, I'm twenty six right now. I'll be twenty nine at the time. He's basically a dinosaur in the contest yes. world. He's just the. It's the, it's about as old as they get. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway to 52. <laughs> <laughs> One more question before we move on. Uh, we were talking about Olympics. In Sage, we've talked about sperm retention. You know, there, there's kind of a theory. Well, I asked him how the internet was yeah, when he, yep. was, he didn't yeah, catch that. Yeah, that's what you're getting at. So th- there's a theory that, like, boxers and stuff say, like, you know, you, you shouldn't uh, ejaculate before a uh, big boxing match. Things A lot of sports coaches say things like that. Now, I want to I want to know the theory. You know, you got you to... Gotta, Olympic medal. Um, did you practice retention, um, or did you uh, did you release? Uh, yeah, there was not a lot of retention. <laughs> We're talking seven day release. It was on that that solo. It's all you could do out there. Trying to get your mind off snowboarding, to be honest. You know, lightning fast internet. It's the easiest <laughs> thing to do. Fast. Bad food. Yeah. It's, a, it's a deadly combination. Yeah, he's in and the room. Isolation. Though. He couldn't talk to anybody. Days. He's yeah. riding a lift by himself. He's like, yeah. that's all he had was that. <laughs> all that he had was that, <laughs> that fast internet. To be honest. <laughs> It's yeah. all he could do, man. It was the only form of communication <laughs> going. <laughs> it was his only self-expression he yeah. could really do. Yeah. And it's an art form, let it me is. tell you. It's it an, is. Art <laughs> <form>. <laughs> it's an art form. It's a vessel. It's a is vessel. it a sport or an art form? It's an art form. It's a vehicle yeah. for self-expression, if you will. Okay. Yeah, if you take a black light, art. <laughs> it's called black light art. Oh, my God. All right, this is derailed. We're going to get this Woo. thing back on the rails here. Here we go. We have a guest question from none other than Torger. Torgar. 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 You gotta enough. roll Good the enough. tongue. You gotta roll it, right? All right. Here we go. Hey, what's up, bomb hole? It's uh, Torgar. I am very hyped. You have my boy Mons in the booth. Uh, Mons, I have a question for you. You've done what many would describe as an impossible feat, and that is. Beating Marcus Cleveland in a big air final. <laughs> so my question to you is, what felt better, winning the silver medal or beating Marcus? Uh, also, I'm thinking about going on an RV trip in Europe. 
I was wondering if you had any experiences with that or any pointers. You can point me in the right direction. Thanks, guys. Have fun. Can't wait to hear the episode. Peace. Is he building a jump? Like, what is he? He's all beating <laughs> hard. Like, what's going on? He's out of breath. Probably hiking. Chad's he calls you Mons. Mons. I thought it said Mons or something. I didn't know if that we're pronouncing it wrong or Mons. Yeah. Mons. Mons. Yeah. yeah. All right. What have you been saying? Mons. I just he sounded different for some reason. Okay. You get the most normal Norwegian name out of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's a good couple questions. Yeah. And after Cleveland called me out for FIFA. You know, got to gotta be honest on this one. I was going to say, you know, winning the medal, but it's not the truth. It was beating Cleveland, you know. Yeah. Beating Steamer. Beating He's Steamer. He's probably like, I just beat fools all the time, though, and for him, it's just like, whatevs. But you for know. you, it's probably like, yes, sucker. Yes, sucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got for sure. you. You could beat me all you want in FIFA. <laughs> I'm yeah, taking what, that medal. What happened at Olympics Big Air last yeah, year? Hey, last time. And that's hey. like the more, that's the big important one too, you know? That's it was like so the... funny actually after the Olympics, or we were sitting like right after the finals, me and Stahl in Cleveland, and me and Stahl were just going off like, I feel so good to have an Olympic medal. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have no Olympic medal? Because Cleveland was the only one there without one. He has none. No. <laughs> And we were just going off oh, so that's huge. all the time. Just like, oh, it's so nice to go to bed with the medal. <laughs> no wonder he goes home and trains for yeah. like 19 yeah. Yeah, hours Yeah, all he does is day. ride. Yeah. Dude, he's got to wait years, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got to wait some years, but he's going to get it for sure. Eh, you never know. And then the RV. Yeah, part two that's RV question. That's a funny question. Because uh, uh, super randomly, me, Marcus, no, uh, yeah, me, Marcus, Olimsta, and, and Torger went for like a four-week trip in an RV. Uh, like two summers ago during COVID, and uh, it was a super fun trip. Definitely some retention mm. going on that trip because mm-hmm. not a lot of room in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we went through like Hintertooks for Verney, Verney's thing, and, and Sauce Fay for for weeks. And yeah, Verney Stock, shout out, Verney man. And um, had a great time in the middle of this trip. Mark is all himself gets sick and. Gets tested positive for COVID no. in this van, and we're sitting in a parking lot in Sauce Fe. and uh, and yeah, Marcus had to sit in that RV for ten days to get isolated. And me and Torger could go to the store, but we couldn't go like ride or anything. So we had like ten days of doing absolutely nothing. You were with him. Yeah, yeah, we so were just like all in. With we him. were all. We were just like, okay, yeah. if anyone gets COVID right now, we're all like, we're all, all in the in. mix. Yeah, so. It wasn't like we we're moving out. We we're he just was like, thank in. you for quarantine with me. Oh, yeah. We kind of had to at that point because we were close contacts. You guys went contacts. on vacation together during quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great RV trip. <laughs> <laughs> and you called it a van, so it wasn't like a big bus. It was like a little guy or what? No, it, it was a decent guy was, for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a de- def- definitely a decent guy. We all had it. Like, me and Tori shared a big, big bed. And, oh, one of those style. Like, big RV. Big RV kind of yeah. deal. It was chill. Like, we had some fun in there for sure. That must have been a... 10 day hangout, huh? Hardcore oh, yeah. hangout. <laughs> Hardcore hangout. We like ended up making a patio outside of our RV. <laughs> we, building like, stuff. To build it, we ended up building like a fireplace and building a patio and, and some random shit. Yeah, it was funny. Sounds like a fun A lot trip. of time off. So you, you mentioned with the RV trip, you kind of breezed over the fact that uh, not a lot of retention happening or the retention was an issue. I was wondering if you wanted to elaborate on Close that. Close quarters. Or? Close quarters. <laughs> Yeah, I could say that for sure. It was a uh, not a lot of room in that thing, and it wasn't retention for sure. Four four weeks, uh, three dudes in an RV. Uh, so uh, it was funny because by the end of it, on our like last day going home, we were like, "So, you guys any any tension releases over the past couple of four weeks?" And it was it was funny because it show it it turned out. All of us done it, did it, did it, and probably more did than it once. once. Huh? No, just <laughs> just, just once, I, just once, and because uh, really? I think it was just a necessi- <laughs> necessity, necessity more than anything. Uh, everyone no, had no their, joy. Everyone yeah. had their own spot, or what? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Uh, but Mark Olmsta was in in quarantine, so and he, we he was, like we were going to go. this. We were going to the grocery store every day. He went. Yeah, he's, he's good to go. Yeah, yeah like, he had some time. Day. He had some time. But yeah. me and Torge were all on top of each other all the time. You're sharing a bed. Yep, and uh, and uh, you had to go Mission Impossible. Yeah. It, was, it was it was actually, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny because uh, it it turned out like me and old Marcus Olmstead got went to go get some wood for f- homemade fire mm-hmm. on our patio we made outside, 
And while we went on our three minute walk to get wood. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick draw McGraw over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Reacher yeah, over here. Well yeah. for it. The born identity called. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. And then Stealth that, mode. Mm. One of those nights, like, you hear the bed shaking? What's going on? I keep feeling the bed shaking. I don't know what's going on. Oh, we my all kept God. it private. There's yeah. these. Have you ever heard of the guy that got caught recently on one of the airlines doing that? No. For real, yeah. No. I think he got banned from. They took away his rights to fly. <laughs> Jet Blue. Jet I've Blue been, scenario. I've been on an RV tour, and uh, this this person shall rena- remain nameless. Is this under the bridge? Yes. <laughs> this, this person <laughs> shall remain nameless. I remember this. But we reason. were uh, we were on a similar situation RV tour for a while. Uh, a few dudes stayed in an RV, and. Uh, cold desolate area i'll leave it vague and at one point um l- later in this trip like yours we'd found out that uh somebody on the trip had woken up in the morning and like gone <laughs> under like an cold icy desolate bridge that's like <laughs> like like negative like 20 degrees <laughs> And uh, gotta do it. Just yeah, like, there's no joy at that point. <laughs> no there's joy. no joy at that point. It's, it's more like self maintenance. So <laughs> oh, you yeah. actually mental killer. health. Mental, it's, yeah. a mental health yeah. it's a mental health it's crisis. It's ball bag <laughs> deflation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. under the cold yeah. bridge. Under the cold, in those just temperatures. Like, just like <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start with like those heating pads. For it's so hands. funny to think about what, like, how much of a priority that is at that point. Like, what are you willing to, where are you willing to go? And then yeah. after your words, you're just like, what did I just <laughs> oh do, man? God. I'm under a bridge. <laughs> Post-bridge anxiety right Post there. Post-bridge yeah. anxiety. <laughs> and then every day you get to see that bridge. Just be like, oh my fuck. God. Yeah, I hope that's not a uh, current commute for yeah. that guy. Yeah. yeah. No, but I bet he probably found not, his way back not. there again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. damn bridge. Okay, we're going we're gonna to move on here. I think it's time for you to what, buds? Name that video part. Oh. Name That Video Part is presented by Woodward, Yanni Buds. And let me tell you something. It's a great place. Their park kicks ass. The builders do a great job. They got a little Danny Davis Peace Park action where you can ride some transition. Uh, They got small stuff. They got big stuff. They got good rails. They got big jumps. If you wanted to learn how to do uh, a a 1440 or an 1800. You doing a lot of those up there? I do, I do them pretty regularly. Yes, but <laughs> regular. I thought I've, yeah. I've heard that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. No, Dude. I have never done one. <laughs> they also know. have uh, Utah's ultimate training facility up there, that indoors area with trampolines, foam pits, airbags, and apparently the best coaching staff in the biz. Mm-hmm. I've been in there, the indoor spot over the holidays. There's dudes running parkour up there, mm-hmm. like like it's out of control. There's uh, little kids doing flips into the pits. It's a uh, it's a good time. I saw Yoni Buds three flip the pyramid too uh, <laughs> when you see you skating around. It was pretty fun. Dude, it's, it's pretty it's pretty sick in there though. For in in truth, and uh, it's only forty dollars for the uh, daily ticket with full day lift access, and that's pretty unbelievable. With some of these spots have what two hundred fifty dollar lift tickets going on. It's a great situation, buds. So if you're looking to have some fun, you're in the Salt Lake or Park City area. Check out Woodward Park City. Their park kicks ass. The whole facility kicks ass. Now, it's time to get into Name That Video Part. I hope you went easy on them. I think I <laughs> did, but I don't know if I did or not. Uh, just to kind of it's provide worse now. context, um, Mons asked us what the toboggan was on the wall, which is Mikey LeBlanc's <laughs> legendary like, toboggan. Did you call me out? <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of made me lose a little bit of faith. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he's a he's a contest guy. Yeah, he's a contest guy. So you got you're not. He doesn't really need to pay attention to, to the well. streets. He doesn't need to know what goes on. Yeah, they don't give out gold medals. <laughs> well, except for unless you're do. doing yeah, unless do, you're doing real snow, real snow. So um, confidence level zero through ten. Give it a solid one and a half. One and a half. Yeah, one point seven five maybe. One point seven five. All right, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's very kind of you. Sick song. Yeah, it's Great it's not song. it's not hard to, it's not hard to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Torstein and and <laughs> it's on his Horgasm. Oh, we got it right. Yeah. We got it right. It's probably uh, one of the ones I've I've watched a lot for sure. <laughs> that was very very gentle. I feel like that I bet Torstein probably made setup. the beat. There's a lot of techno in there, but that one <laughs> is the most obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, that's the key. Such of that. a heavy part of it. 
Well, congratulations. A, yeah. you, you earned this. You <laughs> you won it. Uh, I'll tell you what. I don't know if I would have got that one because I, I wasn't a frequent orgasm viewer. <laughs> um, but uh, you got yourself a bomb hole prize pack. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Look at this. Yeah, what's called a carry-all. You can carry that uh, around Norway and put some items in it. Maybe do a <laughs> picnic. <laughs> That's awesome. Get your carry-all out and... <laughs> Have a picnic. You got all kinds of good bomb hole merch, uh, hoodies, hats, smelling Burg- salts. Big nice burgundy snowboard. Big nice burgundy snowboards, keychains. It's all available. Where, buds? Bombhole.com. Wow. Thank yeah. you, guys. That's awesome. Use promo code S- Torriger Belgram. <laughs> Torriger Belgram. We also have promo code uh, Retention. <laughs> <laughs> Use for pro- 0% RV off. Trip Retention. <laughs> RV trip retention 69 for 0% off. Try that code out. It works really well. 60% of the time works every time. Exactly. For part two of Name That Video Part, this is for our listeners. If you know the song, comment on Instagram on the photo of Mons when the episode comes out. That's where we pick our winner. You do not get a prize pack like Mons. What do you get, bud? Some stickers thrown at you. <laughs> it's prestigious, though. It is a prestigious win. We will say it is. It's more about the honor. Yeah. But honor, it's about respect. Okay, here we go. Great video part, by the way. Okay, thank you guys for playing. Name that video part. Name that video part. This guy did pretty good. Yeah, he actually won. He did it. <laughs> I thought he didn't have a chance. I didn't think he had a chance at all. <laughs> he is Norwegian though. Yeah. And Torstein's kind of that's he's that's, Norwegian. Yeah. He had to get that. The techno is a little bit of a his, lob. They might throw him out of the country yeah. if he didn't get that. Yeah. It's a good point. Uh, another Norwegian thing people do is the shrimping. The diving into the water. <laughs> oh, yeah, big shrimping. Are you are you one of those guys that jumps into the water? A little bit of a shrimp, for sure. Um nothing crazy. There's some guys that are uh, crazy. But uh, it's fun, dude. It's really fun. It's like being super scared of doing a snowboard trick. But it's just landing on your head instead of your feet in the water. And it's pretty fun. It's like a very big thing in Norway, which is hilarious. You could see so many kids would go, like, practice their shrimp technique <laughs> to go out and, and jump from How do cliffs. you practice? You, I like, don't know. curl you just... up in the position, <laughs> and your buddy's like, that'll work. That'll, that'll work. Work. You look That's... good. Let me it's take a good them. shrimp. You you hold a shrimp up next mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, it the chisel, the chiseled jawline. It actually cuts through the cuts water. Through it's the a, water, the, just the Norwegian <laughs> chiseled jawline. It just you just cut it's a right trick, through the water. Huh? It's a yeah. whole trick. Yeah. The old we shrimp. Go, we go. We go chin first. <laughs> Always go chin first. Chin first. Yeah. Just boom right yeah. through the water. That's why Americans can't do that right. Cuts right through. True. Yeah. yeah. The beard, huh. Stony Buds. He just soaks it right yeah, up. Yeah. The it's beard is just splatter fast. More surface area. Horrible. Yeah. He doesn't have a sturdy chin. You shrimp a lot. He's down. Big shrimp? Is, yeah. Uh, not much around here. What about a shrimp platter? I've, yeah, stay away from the shrimp <laughs> platters at a lot of spots, you know? You never know what you're going to get. So, so you, Nothing worse than old shrimp. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, we, it does seem like you're currently having a bit of a... St- <laughs> <laughs> a big, big shrimp. <laughs> dude, that was one and done, dude. <laughs> Bud says this theory that every time we order this food... It's, it's not a theory, it's, dude. It's too healthy for his body. <laughs> And his body can't handle it. <laughs> Slides right out, man. Because <laughs> we just got some healthy food right yeah, before. Dude. Literally every time I eat there, <laughs> within 30, 40 minutes to an hour, it's done. It's out. Too healthy for we you. Gotta... Rejects it. <laughs> body, body just rejects it. Dude, it sends it right back. Rejected. Yeah. <laughs> his body does not know how to handle this healthy food. <laughs> They closed down my favorite Mexican spot up there by 33rd. What was, what's it called there? Uh, Could I ask what was the food you ate? How healthy salsa. was it? What? What, what food did you get? What, tonight? Just, Today? Just now. Everything they make is just free ranging around and Chris's little healthy spot. <laughs> Anti, no antibiotics. <laughs> it was free <laughs> range, man. I can't handle free range. What? It's some grass fed <laughs> pork going on. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> the names of the place are just like healthy. It's like grass fed. I don't even <laughs> know away from the organic there. stuff. <laughs> it's too organic yeah. for my body. Do you guys have anything that was pumped full antibiotics? <laughs> <laughs> and like lived in a cage? I, I need to get the. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the caged beef, please. 
The longer it's caged, the better for my body. <laughs> No, I swear we're three for yeah, three. Do you, have, do you ask if you're in a hotel? Is this, is this cage, cage free? Is this cage free? No, I can't. I can't, I can't, can't have it. There. I can't. I send it back. I can't eat that. Is this free range? I can taste it. I can taste it. Send it yeah. back. <laughs> this was grass fed. I'm allergic. <laughs> Something's up, man. Because we're three oh, for three at that place. Man. It tastes so good too. You know, it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I hate the good tasting, healthy food. You know, my body it's rejects it. It's the worst. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. I'm, oh, man. I gotta get it together, but is, is this free? Is, this is free range. Is it, you gotta send this. Get back this off here. my table. <laughs> I want photos of this animal in a cage. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. That okay. is messed up. All right, Whew. get it together. Get it together. <laughs> Holy shit! I, I don't. You don't. You I just actually. Got warm. You actually don't. You don't eat meat, right? I don't know. Or he doesn't even eat the meat. No. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from the cages as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Should we get a smelling salt? I gotta I, get. I gotta get going it back. Together. Yeah. I, I, gotta, I gotta get double, it together. Doubling down. Here, hit this Double one. Down. I gotta get myself together here, guys. That that uh, was too funny. I'm literally <laughs> crying. I have tears coming down my. Not like my we're face. gonna cry less. <laughs> Not like we're yeah. gonna cry less after this. <gasps> Oh. I usually only do one a oh. day, but Woo. Woo. <coughs> oh god, that was a good one. Oh. Get double. Oh, bad toss. Oh my god, another run through a wall smelling salt. I just ended, ended up drooling. Oh. My pants. Wow. <laughs> we're looking to sign some riders. So um, any any uh and you know we we're gonna do some podium incentive for the the competitors. Some good programs. Have you ever tried running <laughs> through a wall after that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you should actually set up a drywall in the studio. Mm. It's a good idea. And we, all the guests take a whiff and run. Mm. <clears throat> we filmed some commercials. Mikey LeBlanc's a real... He's wow. ran through a great piece of sheetrock for us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. Time to go back to interview stuff, I guess. <laughs> Dude, I, I saw this guy at Baldface. This fun. guy? Yeah. We were hanging. Well, they got oh. the contest guys out there... Preparing for avalanches. Yeah, what's going on? Why did you Why did you do the bald face avalanche course, dude? It's uh, yeah, it's really cool. I've heard about it before, and and uh, know a lot of guys that has gone that have gone there and say it's so good, learn so much, and uh, it's like an aspect of snowboarding I really want to get more into, and I have so much respect for, and I don't want to just get out there and be an idiot, and not know anything. So I thought it was a good idea to get some some background work and and some lay down the groundwork to. Know a little bit more, and that place is just amazing. Like that set up in December with the heavy course is just great, and a crazy amount of great, amazing riders that know so much from before and share the knowledge and and do a lot of studies and get out of there, at least knowing a lot more and almost being more scared of avalanches popping off because you know how like easy it could be. That's or good. Like how... You should be right. Mm-hmm. Of course, dude. Yeah, it's good having a lot of respect for that stuff. And... Do your sponsors like send you there. Or it's just something you're like, I need to move. I want to move towards this. Yeah, that was myself. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I just wanted to get out there and, and see uh, what that was about, and it was it was just the greatest thing. Yeah, man, that's super. So, super. You, are you planning on uh, taking flight in the conch? <laughs> oh, I I, I wa- really want to, um, and I want to get more out there. I've just been out in the backcountry in Whistler a couple times, and been lucky enough to go out with super good guys like Torstein and Ika and. Those guys like went with DC and <clears throat> and uh, been out with JF Pelshat and uh, having a sick time in the backcountry in Whistler a couple of times, but not a lot. Like I I need more more time for sure, and I feel super unexperienced. So um, bald face was a good good like building block to to know more and and this year I, I hopefully I'll get to film a little bit and it sounds like I'm gonna try to link up with Torstein to go film a little bit and. That's super exciting to uh, kind of hitchhike with that guy and go out and see what what it's all about. Where are you? Uh, this is this season. Yep. Where are you guys going? Or is it secret? Top secret location? Super secret, actually. Colorado. Huh? Colorado. I don't know. No, but he doesn't even know. It's so secret. They're gonna put the so bag secret. over his head and send him yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> throw him in the back of a van. Yeah. yeah. Throw a, Torstein just throws the bag over. <laughs> Yeah, Torsten won't let me know. Yeah. Hog, hog ties his legs. Get on the <laughs> airport in Norway with a bag on your head. <laughs> Don't even tell him where he's going. 
That'll be Ooh. fun, though, and you're going to be ready for it, at least, and not be out there all green, not knowing how to put the batteries in your transceiver. Well, pretty green, but but at least a little bit more and know the basics. And it's kind of crazy because after being at uh, Bald Face, I realized something that the the past couple times I've been out in the backcountry, I've had, like, there's something called, like, an expert halo, which I definitely have been that you're, a part you're of. Pro. Explain, explain that I've just, that like, is. been out there. So an expert halo is just going out with someone that, uh, have been out there before they're experienced they're professional whatever and and you just put all your trust in that person and you just go out and don't really worry about anything because you feel safe with that person and you don't question anything and you don't um do what like what you actually should do and you could question anything you shouldn't be scared to ask any question and it's just good because even the most experienced person can forget something or not re- realize at the moment or whatever and i've been in like out there with Torsten a couple of times, I've never asked a single question. If he says I'm good to ride that thing, I'm gonna ride it and not even be nervous. And that made me really nervous thinking about after that, like realizing, uh, even though if you're super experienced, like you could get caught in an avalanche at any time, and and uh, so you should never like put your full just blind trust in anyone. But it's always good to have someone that knows a lot and that respects mother nature and what's going on out there and but you should always be able to ask questions and be comfortable out there. So it was just good to realize a bunch of stuff that I haven't really thought about a lot. So, yeah, a lot of things to take away from that. Also, while we were there, this guy rang the bell twice. <laughs> I did. <Yeah. laughs> and that, for everyone listening, is when you buy everyone a shot. Is that the deal? True. Yeah, we rang the bell Car bombs? Times. Is that what they're running? It was a round of car bombs and a round of tequila. Wow. And a round of sting pong. What would that set you back? <laughs> Uh, you don't even know till you leave, huh? No, <laughs> it's like, like all the ends. You're, like, you're good. You just you just forget. <laughs> uh, no, so you get the bill at the end. But uh, it was kind of funny because we were watching a golf tournament, and uh, me and Torger were watching a Norwegian homie Victor uh, in the PGA. He was, um, yeah, big ear horn for Victor, and he was uh, leading the tournament. And Torger was like, "Yeah, if he wins, you got to ring the bell." And he won that thing, so that was pretty cool. Got excited rang the bell. Did Target win it, ring it too? No, he didn't. Uh, he just called me out for it. Sneaky. Sneaky. So, thinking about you going to the backcountry, I was, uh, you posted a clip from Sauce Fay earlier this year. I think it was like a no-grab Toady 07. Ooh, yeah, New Zealand, actually. New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, I'm, I like to do a request. I like to request one of those off a cheese wedge. Accepted. Can I submit it? <laughs> yeah. It's accepted. It's accepted already. It's <laughs> automatic accept. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Green light. Okay, it's been accepted. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Well, that's stuff. awesome. I, yeah, I'd love to do that on like a big wedge. It'd be sick, super sick to go do it in the backcountry. Now, this is an interesting topic. So, you know, you've you've got you. I mean, we didn't even talk about all the like grand prix and do tours and podiums and all the like FIS events. This guy's got a Seattle slew of podiums and all the contests, right? So we only talked about X. And Seattle Shlu. Where does that come from? <laughs> what is <laughs> Seattle Shlu? I mean, it means a lot. Okay. It means you have a lot of podiums. A metric shit ton, if you will. <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> and then looking at your sponsor situation, it seems like, you know, you're right. You, you ride Burton boards, but you're not, you don't ride for Burton. It's, uh, it seems like you maybe, do you, I'll just ask this as a question. Do you feel like you've been overlooked by sponsors? Um, that's a hard question, and I don't know. It's um, it's funny because sponsorships are it's a it's a difficult and weird thing. Like you could you could be with a sponsor since you were a kid and you know them well and have the right connections and all that and and do do well in your snowboard and just be a part of that family. And it's like often hard to get in to one of those situations if you're not there from a younger situation whatever um and yeah i was just i was on dc forever and um when they cut a lot of people i was one of them and uh i i just decided that i really didn't care too much to be on a team right away i like just wanted to take some time or just like try stuff out and wear wherever i wanted and like feel myself out a little bit and 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 do my own thing and and it's been it's been kind of nice because you just do whatever you want, really. And uh, Burton boards are great. They're really good, no doubt about it. And 
they've been hooking me up with some product. Um, and yeah, right now, uh, just got on Norona for clothing. Really, really sick, high quality Norwegian brand. And really stoked to be there with Torstein. Uh, first time they have two snowboarders on. Is that the Viking logo? Yeah, that's like the Viking logo. They've been the making Indian. outerwear since like 1902. Yeah, but it's mm-hmm. all been in Norway. Yeah, <laughs> it's all been in Norway and they're like starting to expand and having a bunch of stores like in Boulder and, and New York and some cities like that. And um, yeah, Rockstar's really. Rockstar's worth like four sponsors too, though, you know? <laughs> Porsche, I mean. Porsche, <laughs> come on. Do you need a board sponsor when Porsche is your, your deal? <laughs> yeah, right. No, uh, that's all good. But uh, but uh, Norona is super dope. Really stoked on those guys. And and for boards, uh, trying to figure something out. We're in, in talks with some some guys, and it's really exciting. Hopefully, we can make something happen. Um, and um, yeah, that's cool. kind of where we are. And you ride now bindings. I do now bindings are the shit. Mm-hmm. It's awesome, dude. It's uh, JF Pelshat legend. <laughs> He's making these bindings and it's it's the best thing. Like Devin Walsh put me on and like was was talking to, to JF about uh, getting me on and was like help me out and and they're honestly the sickest. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and talk about Palisades, one iconic destination, two mountains now connected by the base to base gondola. We got forty four lifts, eight mountain peaks, and six thousand acres of legendary terrain set in beautiful Lake Tahoe. Welcome to Palisades. Iconic since the beginning, the mountain playground inspires progression and creates world-class athletes. Legendary riders have created countless video parts within this resort. Riders like Noah Selaznick, Jeremy Jones, Chris Roach, and many more. The Spring Park is the spot for sunny laps overlooking Lake Tahoe. Palisades Tahoe has been open to July 4th in past years, and this year the snow is stacking up. It's where dreams start and memories are made. Discover for yourself what legendary looks like Palisades Tahoe. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about Icon Pass. They got over 50 of the best resorts, Stony Buds. They do, and it's worldwide here. 33 resorts in USA, 8 in Canada, 13 international. Grab the best prices on 23-24 and get all the early season's goods. Upon purchase, buy now, ride now, with immediate spring access to six mountains and a total of 12 destinations by April 10th. The immediate resorts are... Big Bear Mountain Resort, Snow Valley, Blue Mountain, Stratton, Sugarbush, Snowshoe in Virginia. And by April 10th, all of the above plus... Mammoth Mountain, June Mountain, Palisades, Tahoe, Winter Park, Tremblant, and Solitude here, here in Utah. It's a nice, very French tremblant there, bud. Thank you. Uh, claim big savings on child passes with the purchase of an adult pass. Unlock spring's lowest prices and score renewal discounts when you renew your Icon Pass for the 23-24 season. Claim Adventure Day for as, lero, as low as 0% down, $0 down, and then pay over time with a 3-, 6-, or 9-month payment plan. Multiple pass options that provide flexibility for how you ride. The good stuff is coming at IconPass.com. So I've I've kind of listened to you talk about Marcus a little bit and always wondered why why the steamer? Where's that name come from? So okay, that's a good that's a great never, question. Never got that. Well, um, Buds, do you want to take this or should does I take he, it? I don't does Marcus know? I'm not sure. Nobody knows. I don't think I'll, so. I'll like ta- we like I, I never know. I'll take yeah. this one. I, this is it'd be an honor. It would be an honor for me to take honor. this. One. This is a this is a prestigious moment. So uh Marcus Cleveland. There's a thing. It's called a Cleveland steamer. Okay. Then that's hence we call them steamer. Now, a Cleveland steamer, don't know the origin, is when you take a dump on somebody's <laughs> chest. <laughs> so, um, And it will steam because it's hot. So yeah. It's warmer than the uh, cold air, I guess. And a air lot of people in Cleveland, Cleveland do that? Uh, you know, All over the world, I think. We'll have to get to the bottom. We'll have to get back to you on that. Buds, maybe you could Google that. You'll have to Google that. It might be a rough. Don't do an image search. Yeah. But Google. <laughs> and so what's is funny a- is like... Chris maybe met him somewhere and would have instantly came up with that, and then like I would have met him somewhere and instantly came up with that. So it's not a story based. It's like one. a yeah, it'll just come. Anyone who knows what a Cleveland steamer is is going to instantly just come to that when they meet him or right. see his name. Right, right. So right, it's right. Uh, so it's not like a story based name yeah, where you so. you know that Marcus is really into 
Cleveland Steamer. Steamers. Yeah, it's just that man. And I don't know why Cleveland Cleveland uh, is an area that popularized the steamer. Mm. Mm. Okay, I just got a little bit. I just did you Google a it? Nugget of information. Yeah. I just did. Uh, I just did a little bit more Cleveland of a deep Steamer. dive here. So the Cleveland Steamer is far more specific than the listings I've seen here. A sexual act by nature. The Cleveland Steamer is when one person craps on another's chest, and very important, and then sits back down and rocks back and forth like a steamroller. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Wow. On top of it. So that's like a steamroller. That's where the steamer comes from. <laughs> So uh, you're gonna need to like Dexter your room like a murder scene. Yeah. So scenario. it's a little bit a little bit more disgusting than I originally thought. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're s- um, yeah. also it's a term of endearment. It so is. We love we love steamer. So just know that that comes from love. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was unexpected, but uh, great great explanation. Yeah. yeah steamers. Was are, that Urban Dictionary? I I just googled that. I don't even know what that was. All right, uh, we're going quite along here. I think it's time for hot takes, buds. Hot takes. All right, so we always ask our guests, who is, for you, it's kind of your MJ, your GOAT, your greatest of all time to you, both male and female? Right. Um, It's a good question. And uh, for me growing up, you know, uh, me being influenced by a lot of Norwegians, but now, like, growing up competing a lot, it's... You know, it's it's for me as a kid. I would say, you know, Torstein is like the goat, and and was doing everything, uh, influencing me in 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 every movie or result or whatever, and has still been like so cool with me and like taking me under his wing and brought me out to do so much cool stuff, and and is a really good dude. Um, at the same time, me competing uh, during so many years with Mark. He blows my mind. Like he, Mark is a competition goat. Just got that twenty second X Games medal, which is insane. Most winningest athlete in X Games history. Um. So, uh, so like, yeah, I'd say like both of those guys are in my head. A couple of MJs, and uh, for girls, you got to like. I I feel like Jamie's almost mandatory. You know. She's uh, always been around, always killing it, pushing the sport. Still, still is, you know. And uh, but Zoe's kind of coming up there and like reaching for that torch, and is definitely doing a very good job. And she's she's an absolute beast and such a cool cool chick. So I think Jamie and and Zoe, Mark and Torstein. A little bit. A little two-parter. A little, little two-parter. Yeah. A little two yeah. for Tuesday, if you will. Two for Tuesday. All right, so then uh, we're going to get into most underrated. Who you got? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, I got, like, you know, it's easy to say your homies. And Norwegian homie Mark Zolimsta is, like, one of the most steezy guys I know. He's <laughs> incredible on a board. You just want to go ride if you watch that guy. He's is so sick to watch. And... Um, and Mark has just kind of been going under the radar a bunch, but uh, he's a guy to look out for. Steve's master. Good answer. Steel or powder? Powder. Woo! I was hoping you'd opt for, like, none of the above park jump. He's yeah. Big air. <laughs> no, like, rails are so fun when you when you ride them a lot, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Nothing competes with snow. Snow is the best. Just staying on snow. Best style ever. Who you got? Oh, I'd say Kazu. Yeah. I like that. Good answer. He's a, mm-hmm. the real G. Best board graphic ever made. Oh. Best board graphic ever made. I really like the Terrius Sword board. Can't I think go that's wrong. really sick board. Just a good classic that never gets old. Okay, if you could go heli boarding with three people, just good times, Ooh. and you're just whacking pow turns. How gnarly are we talking? It's, it's, it's kind of your choice. Kind of really, your choice, yeah. like ideal pow day, like maybe even no cameras. You guys are just wiggling, or you're catching air. You're doing whatever your ideal day. Yeah, nice can, picnics and wiggling. Yeah, you can bring your your carry all, and you can do a kick. <laughs> picnic. Also, mind you, you can bring whoever you want in the world, celebrities. Oh, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be your friends. You it's know, you call uh, it, Young you know? Dolly said he would bring Mike Tyson. 
Nice. We're, we're trying to set that up. Still. Yeah, I was really narrow. I was really narrow minded for that one. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you put it like that, yeah. So um, I could bring three people in this heli to go a ride. Um, gonna need some experience. So I'd pro- I'd probably go Sage, Stale, and Cleveland. And then when we get up there, I'd say only guys with that you know Olympic medals can ride. And you, Cleveland's got to go back down. <laughs> do you have to? Do you bring your medals too? You're wearing. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Stale and I'm gonna tell Stale and Sage to bring them, not tell Cleveland. And then they all like you take him out as like a pass, <laughs> like a pass to get out. So your credentials. Wow. It's, it's your credentials it's your for credential. sure. You're, you're ripping around your wrist. The guides just kinda. checking them before you're allowed out of the heli. Yeah, you check the beacon, you check the medal, and then you're yeah. good to go. Oh, you don't have a medal, son. <laughs> And then he's just going to sit watch, in the heli watch and watch the you heli. guys just have the runs of your life. <laughs> that's yeah, great. That's good. That's I like good that. Heli. I like that. Yeah. Zendaya, a good choice, but I go with that. <laughs> I don't know. Zendaya's pretty good. That's yeah, a good heli, like too. That. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, what else we got left in hot takes here? Uh, beaver slap. You know, do you, do you, when you're in the lift line, you got snow on your board, do you smack it off or you kind of, what's your, what's your technique? I definitely smack it off. Yeah. Okay. Big beaver slapper. He's a slapper. Yeah. Slap right. it a beef. Last question. Worst trend in snowboarding? Um, or in the world, whatever you want. Me coming a little bit from the competition scene is, uh, I'd say, I don't I don't like all the double grabbing. Mm. Like changing grabs for each spins or to create spins or to get points or it just seems so, it's, it's too much for me. Well, there's like grabs that. to create more of a vortex? Exactly. Like a, like that's, a, that's like a lot of people do that to create some vortex and, uh, or to like, double grab to get points and stuff and it just looks so messy instead of keeping it clean and like well you get extra points if you do like a apparently which i, I don't get that. which that i don't sounds, get sounds if you like, like i'd give it a duction. double grab are we talking like a mute to tail or a truck driver a truck driver would be one thing like some mute i don't know mute melon when i do that in yeah, spin I, yeah i i just or, like haven't really enjoyed watching a double grab to be honest like it's great um there's some that could be cool, but I don't know. I just like for me, I don't like it. I think or it's a great Melon? answer. It's a, the it's one? a good. It's a good answer. And okay. there's also actually we can bring that up as well. I one thing that that's bothered bothered me in the industry is like Instagram pages stealing content to create just like random pages for mm. just people sitting at home posting your like everyone's stuff. I feel so random about that. Somebody That's who's just random. swiping stuff all day from other people. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And like not really doing anything. Yeah, but like building a, a huge page to have like hundreds of thousands, tons of followers. Of followers yeah, yeah. Built it that, on other people's that backs. That's some weird stuff. And they're not giving anything to the community. Like, not there's not like a snowboarding page or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. Mm. These are two really yeah. good ones that we haven't gotten. I respect that. Respect. All right, damn, it's been a fucking great chat, Hans. Uh, we got a couple other things. Uh, we always ask about setups. Uh, what what kind of board? You can just walk us through your your gear. Yep. Um, right now I'm on a Burton Custom, um, and running now bindings. I do the good old forearm to knuckles and two fingers. Mm. For stance, I didn't even know that was a move. Mm. You know, Buds does the foreskin technique. <laughs> I do the <laughs> nice, yeah. So I do the, the foreskin. foreskin. <laughs> so you so you do forearm, two knuckles. That's your width. and a foreskin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do like forearm, two knuckles, and that's my width. And yeah. I go nine minus nine degrees. Who, who told you that that was the move? Is to I I that there was Torger, a ratio. I think Torger does that's that. Some Norwegian shit, huh? I think Torger does it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like I. I'll always forget Throw the ruler the or whatever, and, the and like it's so easy to like, oh, that's right, and you do that every and time. And it's always the same. Oh, it's always the same, and it's yeah, feeling right. Love it. Um, and then I got the Nurana kit, the Lofoten, a collection, super nice, very high quality Gore-Tex stuff, and uh, um, that's the Viking outerwear. It's the Viking Does outerwear. Does that come with a uh, axe or a hatchet or uh, a- all of the above? Or yeah. a, uh, sword shield, is that what they call them? A lot of sword shields. Sword shield yeah, formation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's tight. And mm. you and Torstein on that program? Me and Torstein's on that program, Sick. yeah. You guys form the sword shields out there? Those... Yeah, so you got a pro model sword shield. That'd be tight. Yeah, with your like emblem on it. That'd be sick. So what, uh, what about Gogs? Just rocking whatever. Right now it's some Oakleys. Mm-hmm. They've always been super nice. 
like like the lenses, like the fit of my face. And uh, yeah. Money. Drink uh, some rock stars and drive some Porsches. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> what about your uh, edges? Do you, do you got the uh, you got the tune from McDermott? What's how do you get that thing dialed in? McDermott hooks, hooks it up. Like he makes that board so so nice. Yeah, Ryan is Ryan's the man. You mail your stuff to him or do it at the on location. On location most of the time, and he's just yeah nice to human you'll ever meet and uh, makes you go really fast whenever you need to. What's up with yeah. your edges? What do you mean? You keep them sharp. Especially now with you guys like yeah, jamming I, I your edges into the lips. I actually never detune. I just leave them be, really. I kind of like a little bit of grab in the edge. So I just, I don't do much with the edges. Unnatural. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm thirsty, dog. Okay. Buds, you know what it's time for. I know what it's time for. We're going pub beer on them. Welcome to the pub beer crab shoot. How these been going down over there? I noticed you've been swilling. They've been going. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheap. It's fun. It's delicious. It's Norwegian approved. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If you're thinking about getting completely just destroyed responsibly <laughs> or casually having one beer. Yeah. With like dinner, I'll do here tonight. What are you gonna what are you gonna choose, bud? I'm going pub beer. Lager every time. Responsibly. Responsibly at that. For legal purposes. Okay. Dice. He's got two in front of him. Roll that dice. Oh, it's the dice. It's dice time. Okay. So do I roll them first, or do we need the? Give we him a hear roll. the list. You roll them now. You don't hear the list. You just roll them. We'll tell okay. you. What you're he okay. wants the list. All of them. Throw those bones. Seven. That's a seven. Hmm. Seven. This is my favorite one. It is. I like when it lands on seven. Who is one of your favorite people to party with? Mm, it's a oh. good one. Uh, good question. Um, I think. I think it might, it might be Dusty Hendrickson. Mm. That guy is in for uh, in for uh, an adventure every time. Like yeah, every time we go out, he would wake up and have some crazy story you wouldn't believe. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> like so random. That you guy find goes, yourself wishing you were there. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> that guy just yeah never never ends, and and it's awesome to hang out with. It's such a nice human, and and a lot of fun to be around. Yeah, he's got a good attitude. He's like. Pretty uplifting. For sure. So I imagine good things are going to happen. For sure. On his nights out. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Dusty's parents, Marco and Jenny. They are absolute legends. They're awesome. The fam. And DH Sleeper while we're at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost got his head taken off at X Games. Clipped. He put himself out there for Dusty. Yeah. That's trust. That's trust. Didn't even flinch. He's in the trust tree. All right. So uh, we did setups, I guess. uh, Thank yous. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah, thank yous. You want to hit some thank yous? Uh, some thank yous. Um, th- huge thank you to um, to my family, my girlfriend. It's awesome. And uh, sponsors supported me. It's amazing. So feeling so lucky to Torch Time put this so well last night that it feels insane. We were at boulder and for this Nora nothing and he said like we had a presentation and he put it really nice said that feels pretty crazy getting paid to do what people pay to do and so all my sponsors you're amazing appreciate that a lot and and yeah people friends family everyone around snowboarding community is the best and yeah very happy to be be in the in the space i am that's beautiful. It's a good space. It's a great space. I like that. We get paid to do what people pay to do. I yeah. think someone said that on our show. Pat Bridges, maybe. He said, remember. Sure. That's good that stuff. Yeah. You guys are out there getting. But I don't know if we're, that's where Torstein said it. I mean, it's a great. Yeah, he just said he it yesterday. It's a great it was a yeah, formulation of super thoughts good because formulation. it's so true. Yeah. Wise words. Well, we want to take this time to say thank you for coming on our show. It's been a great chat, Mons. Thank we you, really guys. really appreciate you. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of our listeners, everybody that tunes in and supports us. We really, really appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Over and out from the bomb hole. <laughs>